I reckon you got a diggy hole, boy. <laughs> you sure do got a pretty diggy hole. <laughs> I'm going to stick my shovel in it. <laughs> Mining for gold. <laughs> I just oh. went dark. <laughs> well, I could have said mining for coal. <laughs> mining for souls. <laughs> uh, it brings a whole new implication because we're in the holiday season of Santa bringing coal to all the bad little children. <laughs> That's right. It's like, that's not coal. <laughs> <laughs> that's petrified shit. <laughs>
Oh, that's almost like a prerequisite. That should be a prerequisite it for be, our show. should be, shouldn't it? Yeah. Lock yourself in a closet with a <laughs> bottle of alcohol and don't come out until one or the other is done. Either the podcast or the alcohol. Yes. <laughs> No, trust me, this gets so much better the drunker you are listening to this. <laughs> I'm just picturing some guy in, in like, tiny whiteies climbing out from, like, the closet, like, under the stairs with, like, an empty bottle of Jack. <laughs> I made it through an episode. Ma! Ma, I need more whiskey! <laughs> oh. They're in a bathroom break! I need another bottle! Hurry up! <laughs> Cheeto stained tidy whities no less. Meanwhile, <laughs> why are you getting the whiskey? Where's the stocking on the fireplace? <laughs> well, it's a bathroom break. It's the closest thing I could grab. <laughs> oh, shit. And on that note, our assistant producers, <laughs> you know, it's a, it, it amazes me that, <laughs> like... <laughs> We have assistant producers <laughs> still. I was gonna say it they amazes, haven't left. <laughs> I was gonna say it amazes me we have friends, but <laughs> that too. <laughs> Our assistant producers are Lisa Kelly Briggs, ELS Glass, Dorita Abrahamson, Raven Madigan, Gina Volpe, and Julie Phillips. <laughs> Woo! Thank you guys. Alright, so I'm drinking eggnog moonshine. What are you drinking? I'm starting out with a rum and coke, so cracking. Cracking and coke. I bought a Now, if it was like a bottle of cracking and doing a couple lines of coke, <laughs> that'd be a whole different type of fucked up. <laughs> you know, I never got the appeal of coke. Yeah, I, I never got like, coke. Like, nothing about coke ever really appealed to me. No. And there was the analogous comment I heard from somebody of, like, yeah, it's super expensive and it gets you high for 10 minutes. And I'm like, why the fuck would you bother? Like, yeah, yeah. to me, it was never anything that sounded appealing. So it was like, yeah, eh, all right. I've known a couple people that have used Coke. I, to my knowledge, I don't know anybody or, or have seen someone in person on Coke. Hmm. Like, to my knowledge. Right. I have certain people that are... You know, well, I mean, in real life. That like, I've, I mean, you've seen Sam Kennison videos. Yeah. What I'm saying is... is I, okay. I don't think I've ever seen him when he wasn't on Coke. Well, that's what I meant. In person. <laughs> right, right, like, right. You know, you know to, to my knowledge, I... I forgot what I was going to say now. <laughs> yes. Was, uh, yeah. One seriously. point for Crow. I mean, <laughs> oh, we're going to go that route? <laughs> well, I mean, it is the new new season. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> So we're scoring points for making the other person forget You know what, what someone say. should do? Okay, so hypothetically speaking, years from now, if this ever, like, took off and became, like, huge, someone go back and listen to these and, like, tally up the scores from the first season. <laughs> <laughs> or any season. Right? Like, yeah. Can you imagine, though, like, some atomic war or some, something happens. Right. And this is the kind of recording that, like, thousands of years in the future they find and somehow listen to. And they're looking at it like, well, no wonder they bombed each other. What the fuck? <laughs> I, you know, okay. It, 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 in the defense of... Listen to these two assholes. <laughs> in the defense of the podcast, I will say, I would at least hope that if that were the case, they would listen to us... And there would still be a question because of the rapport that we would have to where it would be like, well, they disagree and they can have a conversation. Well, that would be good. Uh, like, yeah. you know what I mean? And but so, I'm also looking at, what if some poor we, schmuck we're, decides, like, we're a religion now? Now, that would be far <laughs> more likely. Be like, okay, what is this cult? Like, like this is evidence of, like, this cult that they built, like... <laughs> Yes! The cult of drunken sorcery. (laughs) We can make this happen. I thought we had made this happen with the fucking, the the missing hour and the fucking... (laughs) Well, I mean... The inner secret mystery of the missing hour. (laughs) Yeah, but it's one of those, you know, only select people are going to hear that. Well, right, they're the initiated. 
Ah, okay. they're, they're the priestly cast. <laughs> they're the true believer. And they're the ones that are going to survive this like nuclear attack and <laughs> lead on to develop a religion later? No, it's the archaeologists <laughs> of the future that are going to fucking infer that. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah, and then you'll have the fucking conspiracy theories of it's continued underground. <laughs> we just don't we just don't know where they are, but they're still there, like in the shadows. <laughs> They're in the closet, man. <laughs> See, they talked about the cave in the diggy hole. <laughs> oh my God. Everybody start digging. We got to find them. <laughs> oh, shit. And thus, mountain dwarves are born. <laughs> right? <laughs> this is how this starts. It, and the sad thing is, when you look at the historical and archaeological record, it really is how a lot of this shit starts. Oh. Like, it's just bullshit. Oh, Christ. All right, so, so shit done to fucking cover before we get too, too distracted. And <laughs> half of this shit, I wanted to cover the last, last podcast, but we didn't get to any of it after, like, a five-hour recording. <laughs> Yeah. One of the ideas that, that we talked about was changing up the format a little bit, which we're still looking at issues on, but we covered that extensively, so so that's done. What do you think about the idea of doing a pre-recorded intro? Because currently we have just the intro music. Yeah. But what if we had a set pre-recorded intro of like welcome everybody this is drunken sorcery i'm mr mike i'm crow like had a a set intro i'd be fine with that doesn't matter ah okay you're like i don't give a shit because huh. <laughs> we can still have you know little little blurb of conversation at the beginning right which we usually end up having right and then you have the the opening music and then the opening intro right and then we go back into the conversation okay. so it's it, that'd be fine <sighs> okay so we may end up doing that. The only the only thing you're going to have is if we have any special guests. Yeah, because yeah. those wouldn't be part of the recorded intro. Yeah, well, we can we, we can always announce that though after right. the intro plays. Yeah, so we can mitigate that as we need to. Same idea for like a pre-recorded outro. So I was figure yeah. same same answer. So all right. So one of the things I wanted to do for this and subsequent assuming subsequent is that the first episode of every season should be like a year in review okay it's one of the default starting points for our conversation and this is what i mean when i talk to people in person about when the conversation of, of having a podcast comes up or conversation of well, what's it about it becomes this challenge for me personally to be like well, we talk. That's it. Like, it's anything and everything. And there's no way to express really appropriately the engagement and enjoyment that we have, nor yeah. that our audience has in listening to it that comes across right. You know what I mean? Okay. Nothing I can say really comes across right to explain it. That said, when we talk about the idea of just having conversations... Because of the types of conversations we get into and because of the, the nature of some of the things we talk about. Mike, put that away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn, you caught me. <laughs> because, because of the nature of some of the things we talk about, there have been some conversations I've had with people that it's almost like that that doubting Thomas of like, are you sure it's not like pre-set up and scripted and like you know like really not necessarily like specifically crafted of every word said but like are you sure you didn't like pre-set up this topic beforehand type thing and it's like no none of this shit fucking is like coordinated that way but exemplary of that is the idea that we have developed this routine or habit of every month we go well how was your month yeah. And that usually is enough to initiate or, or start off a viable and, and decent in-depth conversation. And so similar to that, I want like at the start of every season to be like, okay, well, How is your year? while we do every month, <laughs> when you take the total like pan out and look at the total scope of it, 
overall, how was the year? Okay. You know what I mean? To to look at more of the the overt major themes as opposed to some of the myopic minutia that we get into, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that that could be a fun way of approaching it. So that's one of the things that I want to do in this podcast. That said, before we get into that, had a handful of things that I wanted to touch on. Okay. Okay. You touch so, your hands on something? Touch, touching my fingers into things. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So. Hey, now. One of the things that, that is a recurring theme in the podcast is my utter antipathy and, and hatred for the, the big A art world. Yep. And I showed you earlier the image of the Basil. The, the Buddha one. No, no, no. The the Basil artwork, quote unquote artwork, of the banana duct tape to the wall. Oh, that fucking shit. Okay. Yeah. We had a conversation about that at work. <clears throat> so so for the audience that doesn't know, there was a museum in Miami and it's a, a annual art event. It was a Basil. And one of the pieces of art, quote unquote art, that Sold for a hundred and twenty thousand dollars was literally a banana duct taped to a wall. Yeah. Apparently that story gets even more interesting. Okay. Another artist, quote unquote artist, that went there, yeah, did an impromptu quote unquote performance art piece where he ripped the banana off the wall and ate it. <laughs> And called the performance art piece, quote unquote, hungry artist. Oh my god. <laughs> Are you fucking serious? To which the museum had to replace the banana. <laughs> uh... Which is this fascinating, like, I know this is all is completely, absolutely, insanely ridiculous. But it is fascinating from a licensing standpoint, because where is the real art now? Like in his the person, tract. <laughs> the person that paid one hundred and twenty thousand for this, what does he own? The new banana, the old banana, the banana peel. What comes out of his digestive tract? Like, what is the ownership? <laughs> like, what is the priority of licensing at that point? Like, it, it's I, I fascinating. Don't know. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> right? Aside from all the bullshit of taping a piece of banana, or of talking banana with a piece of duct tape to a wall and calling it art, like, aside from the bullshit of that, just the legal liability issues See, are I was, insane. I was told that it was the guy that bought it, took the banana off the wall and ate it. No, no, it stayed up for the rest of the exhibition. Oh. Yeah, and prior to being delivered... This other artist came by and ate it. That's pretty funny. Right. Like, it's insane. Like, the logistics of... of like, I don't... I don't see how a banana taped to the wall in the first place is art. Oh, it's all bullshit. But, yeah. Just for, for technically speaking, the, the liability issues on that are insane. So, I don't know. I thought that was absolutely fascinating and fucking, like, completely enthralled with that... You know, for the entirety of the month. I'm going to get you a banana for Christmas. <laughs> Is that a banana in my stocking, or are you just happy to see me? <laughs> That's a pretty big piece of coal. <laughs> now I'm going to take a picture of a banana and two pieces of coal in a stocking. Yes! <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, so I had a friend of mine send me an email of a... Artist opportunity. Okay. And it's one of those things where coming from the art world, when I try to describe the levels of ridiculousness of the art world to someone not in the art world, mm -hmm. it comes across as if I'm being hyperbolic or if I'm making shit up or making exaggerating for effect. And okay. it's like, even outside of the ridiculousness of 120000 for a banana, you know what I mean? Even outside of that, you go, okay, well, there's that, but the rest of it, no. The 
the entirety of the art world's like that. The like top to bottom across the board, yeah. it's all fucking batshit nuts. That's just the most glaring example. Coming from that world, Currently. I'm familiar with it. It's just when you try to convey that to other people, it doesn't come across that way because they're not that familiar. And so I'm constantly like, haha, see, I can point to this. And, and it's not just me saying this. This is exemplary of the bullshit that I'm talking about. So, membership opportunities for a full membership in a gallery is $80 a month every month. Okay. Required commitment for a year. So, 80 times 12. Yep. That I would have to pay as an artist to the gallery. So, it's $960 for the year from you. Right. In addition to paying that, I am also required, I think if I read this right, every quarter, there is a sitting time requirement of one cycle. Okay. Which seems to be that for every quarter, I'm required to, for three separate shows, sit in the gallery and act as a docent for free. So I'm the artist. I'm in the art. You're the gallery. I yeah. pay you $960, plus I work at the gallery three different nights yeah. for free to sit there and answer clients' questions about other people's art. That doesn't make sense, but okay. Okay, but that's one of the requirements for full membership. You as the gallery get a 10% commission on anything that is sold. So I'm working there for free. Yeah. I sell one of my pieces of art. You get 10% of it. Okay. And I'm required to attend committee meetings. And in exchange for all of that that I'm giving you, I get an exclusive member-only art show and one piece in every month. The show's done once a month. Okay. So if there's 50 pieces in that show, one of them is guaranteed to be mine. Okay. <laughs> so you're paying $960. Basically, you're paying $80 to put your artwork up there. And one piece. Yeah. That's what right. I'm put put one piece of artwork up there. Right. But it's not just And you have to work for free for three nights. Right. And take more of your time to go to their committee meetings and everything else. Right. That just can adjust what rules and guidelines you have to follow from that point forward, even if you have no say in it. Right. You're just there to listen in. Yeah. Right. Welcome to the art world. <laughs> Yeah. I, no. <laughs> now, I could be a sponsored member, in which case I'm paying 200 bucks a month. Okay. The only difference is you don't take a commission. Okay. Okay. I don't have a required sitting time, and I don't have to attend the meetings. So, essentially, they're charging you an extra $1,440 to show my art. Show your art. And for you to not have to do anything else. Right. Meanwhile, someone else works for free to sell my art because it's not them working for free. But now my thing is, why would, <laughs> why would artist A want artist B to be giving answers about his artwork if they don't even fucking know? You, you regularly or, wouldn't. Or they intentionally give shitty information... Because they don't want you to buy their stuff. They want you to buy their own stuff. Yeah. Welcome to the art world. No. Not to mention the initiation fee. How much was that one? All members must pay a one-time non-refundable initiation fee of $50. Oh, okay. Which is not a lot, but I thought you were gonna say like for starving or something. artists, $50, that... Yeah, there's a reason it's called starving jackass. Yeah, like that's a whole fucking bunch of ramen that'll get you through the month. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Mm, yeah. Ramen. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, here, here we go. Space allotment. Wall space is approximately eight feet of linear space. So that V buys you eight feet, eight feet for one piece. Yeah. And they have like veto approval as to whether or not that piece is acceptable or not. <laughs> so essentially anything you put up there could be vetoes. No, you're not putting that up. Yeah, there. absolutely. Yeah. After you've already spent your money. 
after you sign the contract to pay them for a year. Yeah. Wow. Welcome to the art world. And this is considered one of the quote unquote better deals. Yeah. Like art world's fucked. <laughs> So there's that. No, I think the worst thing is not that they even have a contract like this or that that's what they're looking for, that some other dumbass is out there doing it. Oh, yeah. And that's the thing is is it, it's kind of a exploitive thing, but there are people are, that do not have enough business savvy and approach it as, well, what else am I going to do? What What other option do I have? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and so it, I mean, it is very exploitive in that sense. Huh. Yeah. So I found something else, which is kind of epic. Okay. It is called the New Age Bullshit Generator. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So do you want to sell a New Age product or service? Tired of coming up with meaningless copy for your starry-eyed customers? Want to join the ranks of best-selling self-help authors? We can help. <laughs> Basically, this guy got tired of all his fucking new agey bullshit. Mm -hmm. So he wrote a procedurally generated algorithm to come up with completely random new age bullshitty sounding crap. Okay. So you press the button. Synchronicity is a constant. We exist as electromagnetic resonance. This life is nothing short of an invocation unifying of high-frequency flow. We can no longer afford to live with delusion. How should you navigate this transformative galaxy? The dream time is calling to you via a resonance cascade. Can you hear it? Entity, look within and strengthen yourself. <laughs> that makes me want to punch people. Right? Reality has always been bursting with messengers whose bodies are enveloped in rejuvenation. <laughs> what? You know, the worst thing is everybody knows somebody that actually sounds and talks sounds, like that. Yeah. And it's like you just, you want to walk up and just throat punch them. Right? <laughs> it's like, no, I said, can you hand me a soda? What the fuck is wrong with you? Right. Our conversations with other spiritual brothers and sisters have led to an ennobling of hypermagical consciousness. Give you something hypermagical. <laughs> I got your hypermagical floating right here. So, Brother Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Our... Yes, a magical. <laughs> Not today. On this episode of Drunk and Sorcery, <laughs> we are going to listen to the words. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I didn't hear you loud enough, boy. <laughs> I said hallelujah. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. Y'all motherfuckers need Jesus. <laughs> and I tell you, brothers and sisters, God has directed me. He talked to me every damn morning. He, God has directed me. <laughs> Did you me say that... God and point at your balls? Maybe. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Look, you worship in your way. I worship in my way, all right? Oh, Christ. All right. So, Mr. Mike, how's your year been? Up and down. Pretty good. I mean, you yeah, know, so, some, your sex life been. So, no, you know, <laughs> in and out, up and down, all around, <laughs> twisting around like a helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, you know, it's some, some good points, a couple of rough spots, but, you know, overall, pretty good. So, what's your highlights been of the year? Like, I think back at the year, this is what stands out. Watching Mikey graduate from basic training. Nah. I mean, that that's going to take the cake for a while. Right. Because that, that's just, that's a big pride moment right there. Right. And not just for me, for him also. Oh, yeah. yeah. He'll, I mean, he'll be coming home soon for the holidays. And, and Is he really? Awesome. Yeah. Nice. And uh, so we'll, we'll get to see him again for a little bit. You know, it, it's different now, though, with him being in tech school. Rather than basic, because now we can still, you know, we send him a text message or call him every now and then. Or, right, you know, right. Or we're call us or whatever. Yeah. Whereas before it was like, you know, eight and a half weeks of like no contact. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's not as bad now, but it's still, it's a matter of, all right, well, you're in tech school for however long and then you go to where you're stationed. And then who the hell knows when we're going to talk to you again, because. Right. Yeah. Different time zone, different all sorts well, of shit. And, yeah, that's the thing. It's depending upon any number of factors. And you're now working 
a specific schedule. Right. It's like, yeah, it. What happens if he works overnights? You know what I mean? It's like right. shit. So. So I tried to tell tales out of school, but one <laughs> of the things that you told me that really stood out about that graduation was when you guys left. And I don't know if you want to like share that story or because if you don't, it's cool. Like it's kind of a you well, know, you know, it was one of those things of the last night we were there. He's got to go back to his dorm. He's got to get everything packed up. You know, the next morning he's shipping out at whatever hours to, uh, you know, leave for tech school and everything like that. And yeah, obviously, you know, it's an emotional time. Everybody's hugging each other and crying. And, well, I'll see you later. You know, good luck and all that type of stuff. And, you know, not just like us. I mean, not like all the families all in the area. Right. And yeah. the the parents are like, you know, hugging the kids, whatever, and, and, and getting choked up again and teary eyed and stuff like that. And then like, you know. I see Mikey like walking and he's got, you know, he's got his backpack on with some gear and shit in it, but he's just like, all right, I'll see you guys later. Grabs his gear and like walks like just head held high, chin up, you know, not sad, not upset, not, you know, turn around and like, you know, Oh, I want to run back and give him another hug. It was like, no, he's like, Nope. Got to go to work. Let's go. Let's do this. Right. And it was like, you know, emotional, but yet again, it was like another that like, he's got this. Yeah. You know, he's, he's not afraid of what's going to happen. Right. Well, and that's the thing that stuck out for me was that, that as an example of the contrast of some people that lament the loss of the past or long for the comfort of the childhood nurturing Mm -hmm. you know what i mean and that it was an indicator of like it was almost analogous to the no no i put my toys away i'm a man now yeah kind of like and i think i said to you something to the effect of like you know i'm not even as uncle i'm not like yeah you know yeah. a cousin or anything like that but i'm fucking proud of him for that it's like yeah that just reaching that level of maturity of all right yes i love family but i got shit to do now yep i'll see you later yep. you know what i mean exactly that that, that like i'd love to stay in chat but i gotta but get to work i have responsibilities yep. and i have my own life and my own you know, world to manage and my own things to address and my own goals that I want to accomplish. It's almost the manifestation behaviorally of I'm not going to let anything stand in my way, including sentimentality of family. To an extent. Yeah. You know what I mean? He did say though that, you know, yeah, it's rough because you go from not seeing your family for eight and a half weeks then you get to see them for like the weekend right right and then now it's 18 weeks whatever it is that oh, yeah. you don't get to see anybody anymore right and he goes so you get like that that hang on tight because it's only a short period of time type right. mentality and then boom they're gone again for however long right right he goes and it, it makes it makes homesick all over again right you know right, he goes right but Knowing that at least, you know, now I can, I can call or I can send you a text message or whatever. Right. I I can go on Facebook and look at stuff every now and then, you know, like that type of thing. Right. Being able to do those things makes it a lot easier compared to before it was, you had no contact. You get a written letter every now and then and that was it. Right, right, right. You can send a care package with like, you know, his favorite candy or something like that in it. Yeah. You know? Well, and, and, and to be clear, like that's more of what I was referring to is not to diminish the importance of family or the importance and significance of getting to to see and interact with family. It, It, in a weird way, it almost elevates it in the sense of like seeing the behavior that demonstrates that as much as I love family, I still got shit to do. I've still got, the rest of my life ahead of me. Yeah. And it's not to say that that family isn't significant. It's a contrast of out of all the trivial shit that could get in my way. 
I'm not even going to allow something as significant as family hold me back from walking down that road with my gear and going on and doing, you know, taking on my responsibility. Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, if I'm not going to allow the longing for family to stop me, then that is indicative of nothing. I'm sure as fuck not going to let goofing off on a game stop me or you know what i mean yeah, like something yeah. else you Although know what that I mean? is one of the first things he got when he got to tech school <laughs> um one of the one of the guys that was leaving was selling uh xbox or whatever the case was one of the one of the new xboxes like you know still in the stores for like you know three four hundred change right right with the guys like hey you're you're new you don't have anything do you want to buy this and basically offered gave Mikey the the Xbox controller and like a couple of games over the cases for like 150 bucks. <laughs> nice. Because he's like, I'm leaving and I don't have room to pack it, so right. I'm either gonna throw it out or someone can buy it. Yeah, I could use a little extra cash. And Mikey was like, <laughs> Shit, yeah. All right. <laughs> uh huh. So he made his uh his, his first purchase. <laughs> nice as, like, as an about, adult is, i think he yeah. said it was probably like maybe like hour and a half of actually being on property <laughs> right nice <laughs> he was like getting in the dorm getting into the dorms and getting everything set up and i was like wait what, what? you're selling a what <laughs> like right off the bat and of course the first thing he asked his mother to send him was his playstation console and some clothes or something i don't know Right. So we sent him like a care package of snacks and goodies and shit. So nice. A couple of them. Nice. Uh, so, but, I mean, but that's, that's, that's also, that's like, that's just his way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Like it's not doing it for an escape. He does it for like, well, I can talk to so-and-so through this. I can, I can have fun with so-and-so keep up with family members that he you know plays games with. Oh yeah. Not only is he having fun playing the game, but he's also talking and communicating with family members and friends and stuff like that. So, oh yeah. You know, so for him, it's equally fun and a way of communication. Right. Right. So. Well, and I find it interesting. Like, I've I've helped a number of people over the years, for lack of a better way of putting it, like educate people to recognize that, contrary to the common perspective of video games because the common perspective of it is it's an entertainment thing it's a you know goof off like almost like a, a something you do as an escapist mentality yeah. you know it, it's it's i need downtime i need to get away from the stressors of whatever like it's yeah. a, it's a a pastime okay and, and contrary to that idea Video games themselves are actually just a a new and emergent form of media. Yeah. And so it is no different than when the dominant form of media was books that when movies came out. Yeah. You know, the people that wrote books were like, oh, this is just a fad. This is just a, a you know, stuff that people goof off with. And it's like, even if you could argue that it started that way. You can't lump the media itself as a singular thing. Sure. sure, there's Weekend at Bernie's. There's also Citizen Kane. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's American Pie. There's, there's Schindler's List. There's also Schindler's List. There yeah. is amazing forms of cinema, as well as absolute crap. It, and the thing is, is that video games are no different sure you've got games that are just you know quote unquote fluff and and bullshit and you know the equivalent of like you know national lampoon yeah. whatever yeah you know what i mean but you also have games that are not only amazing games in and of themselves like you know as a, a entertainment yeah okay but are incredible stories that the story couldn't be told in any other media. So, for instance, specific media allows for the telling of certain kinds of stories. In literary fiction, in a book, you can tell a story where there is no dialogue and the entirety of the story deals with the person thinking to themselves. 
Okay. So you could imagine a scene reading it in a book of the person having an internal dialogue. That type of story would be very hard to pull off on cinema. Not really. Not if you had the audio with basically the, the video going along with it, but then you just hear the audio kind of but it, of the person talking. But themselves. it depends on how well it's done. It would be very hard to pull off. As an example of this, it's part of one of the reasons why purist to the comic book had such a problem with the many iterations of Spider-Man. Because in the comic book, Spider-Man was always talking to himself. Yeah. And in the movie, he's not. And it's hard to convey that idea of him talking to himself. Yeah. Like having that regular running dialogue. It's hard to convey that. So different media allows for different types of stories to be told. And in games, certain types of stories are allowed for that could never be told in book or yeah. in, in film. You know, those types of stories, some of which absolutely are fucking nothing but fluff, but some of them are incredible and amazing. Yeah. You know, it really is just a uh, a different media and art form. See, now, for you me, know? it's also a matter of, like, I look at some of the games and, uh, for example, we'll say, are you familiar with, uh, I think it's District? It's a Tom Clancy game. It basically, it's like a, a say an assortment of I don't know, five or six different, we'll say like sleeper cell type soldiers okay. that are quote unquote activated at the end of the world. Okay. And Tom Clancy is such a weird cookie. It's yes no. I mean, I'm I'm still waiting for the the movie they were supposed to make like you know sixteen fucking years ago about <laughs> Rainbow Six. I'm still waiting for the movie. Well, Tom Clancy does this thing that that in general, and it's not always, but in general, he'll write a book, release a movie, and release a game all about the same story. To an extent. <laughs> and it's interesting because of exactly what I said to see like how that same story is communicated yeah. through the different media. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, supposedly there's a movie very similar to the Rainbow Six theme. Okay. Uh, but not put under a Tom Clancy or Rainbow Six name. Okay. So, but supposedly that, that movie is either is released or being released. I, I have to look it up still. Do you know what um, it's called? Or I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. But I, I remember what Facebook page I was on when they were discussing it. And it was like, oh no, really? Oh my God. And, <laughs> and then I realized, wait, it's not exactly the same. See, I'm, so. I I know this is cynical, but I'm waiting for, in our current era, a huge kerfuffle and political firestorm to develop over Tom Clancy. Why? Well, there is a... I'm going up like, <laughs> really quick, though. Like I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, wait a minute, he didn't write any books about Trump? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, here, here, here's, here's why. Okay. So there, there is a story that 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 I heard, and like with everything we talked about, fucking do your own research and fuck if I know if it's true. And yeah, you know what I mean. Like it's a story I heard where he got a visit from the Men in Black when he wrote The Hunt for Red October. Okay, and basically a black Lincoln Town car showed up at his house. And two guys came up to his door and was like, we need to have a talk. And he had to legitimately prove through presenting his notes. And fortunately for him, he kept meticulous records. Yeah. Of, well, here was how the idea started. And you can see where I crossed out this word and changed it to this. And you can see where I crossed out this whole idea and changed it to this. Yeah. And he had to... to actively prove that he made up that story because entirely coincidentally it inadvertently revealed top secret classified information yeah about military hardware that no one knew that existed 
that he thought he made up. Yeah, but it really the government existed. was like, um, where'd you get this information, son? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And he's going, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, who's your source? <laughs> right. Like, the, at the, I, I don't mean this as a, like, a joke of like, Haha, where's your source? They were not joking. Yeah. They were like, who told you? Like, yeah. and he's like, what are you talking about? And they're like, <laughs> look, we're either sitting down time in this conversation here or you're going to disappear for a while. We're having a conversation. Your choice. You know what I mean? You ever hear Area 51, boy? Right. right. Like, you're going to be under it when we're done. Right. Like, very, very, like, no bullshit men in black shit. Like, that he went through when he wrote that book because... Yeah. Yeah. So, and I think of if that happened today, in our political climate today... Oh, Jesus, fuck me. Like, the firestorm that would come out of that. Yeah, well, Like, you know what I mean? I mean, all in all, <laughs> it's not necessarily to say impossible that no. any one of his previous written books oh, yeah. could actually be an international incident that it could occur mm -hmm. and they could even sit there and say no we use such and such book as a fucking script right like yeah you know who the fuck knows well that gets into that whole like art following life following art thing yeah yeah like yeah it is insane let me think this could be dangerous <laughs> <laughs> fuck you <laughs> i'm trying to think how's my year been yeah how'd your year go and you're telling me before we started recording, you fucked something up at your house. Huh? Put a nice hole through something that took you forever oh, to fucking build? fuck me. God damn. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> Go ahead. Now explain your fuck up. <laughs> All right. So the enchanting table I made. Which took how long? Like nine months. Something <laughs> like that. I don't fucking even remember. Enchanting table I made. All right, so I don't really have a good place to put it <laughs> in, 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 in my workspace, so it's currently sitting on a table kind of in the middle of things. Also, I'm, I'm slowly getting into archery and, and very, you know, baby steps beginning shooting archery. And unlike a lot of people that approach things, I recognize, at least to some extent, the the scope of what I don't know. So I could give a rat's ass about whether I hit the bullseye or not, or whether I yeah. look like Hawkeye or not, or anything like no, that. Right now, you're it's, just practicing fundamentals. Right now, I'm literally practicing making sure I draw the bow back the entire way. <laughs> making, <laughs> making sure that, like, the the placement of the string is in the same place every time. Like, yeah. like basic, like you said, you know, basic fundamentals, you know. And I'm just concentrating on that that's all i'm doing it's not every day but but i try to like you know at least every other day or, or thereabouts try to shoot three to four sets of six arrows because right now that's what i have yeah you know and it's a good starting place where it doesn't burn me out it doesn't blow out my muscles it keeps me interested where at the end of the fourth set i'm like I still want to go and that will carry over to tomorrow to yeah. where the next I do day it again. I want to do it again. Right. The next day I won't be like, ah, oh, fucking this again. Like it, it will help, yeah. you know, maintain that instead of burning it out. You know what I mean? So, so I, I'm, I'm approaching it from a, the right way that you're supposed to approach it. And, and I have no interest in rushing it or getting perfect right away or anything like that. I'm like, look, I hope to be 80 and, you know, be able to at least shoot. That's, yeah, you know, my long-term goal. That said, I'm shooting indoors because outdoors where I live, it's snowy and cold and fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, any given day it's rainy and everything else. Yeah. So I'm like, fuck it. You know, I've got the room inside. So 
sort of. I have a long corridor of the space that I live in is a long, narrow space. So I uh, <laughs> stand at one side and shoot to the other side of this long, narrow space. And, and that other side of that long, narrow space is the, the target. And then behind that, I have a piece of plywood. And that's leaning up against behind that, the table on which sits the enchanting table I made. <laughs> Um, yep. One of the arrows kind of maybe sort of missed. <laughs> Oddly enough, which I was kind of surprised at, punched through the plywood. Yep. Awesome. Good to know that arrows have that much penetrating power, but didn't really realize that, holy shit, they can do that. <laughs> Like, okay, look, look, fucking, they've been years, used for thousand years to fucking, like, in military campaign and for life and death scenarios, and great. I get that all, but there is a vast difference between conceptual and experiential reality. Uh huh. And when you see it punch through a piece of plywood with a nice round hole, you're like, Damn. Uh-huh. And then you realize that on the other side of that plywood was the bottom of your <laughs> chanting table, and you're like, oops. <laughs> Alright, well, looks like I'm fucking patching that part up. Uh, like, shit. Fortunately, it didn't hit any of the electronics or any of the fucking design stuff. It was literally just one of the parts of the bottom of the candle holder, so... Oh, okay, all right. Like, so it's, it's not nothing horrible. major, which is good. It didn't, like, hit the, the bowl with the water, which is good. Like, it was, it was nothing major. It was entirely superficial, which got addressed and fixed within, like, three hours like yeah like it was nothing nothing major that said that moment of when you click the release on that and you hear that and it's all milliseconds i mean it's damn near instantaneous (laughs) of you click it and you hear and you see that arrow punch through and you, for the split second, see the plywood flying off the back yep. of it. It's like time and slows down. And then you can project on the side, seeing the arrow going through the project <laughs> that you just worked for nine months. You're like, oh, fuck. God damn it. Yeah, I am it, all too familiar with the it, sound it, of an arrow hitting a chunk of wood. <laughs> right, like it was very like visceral, like ooh, all right, I gotta, because it literally sounds like you took a screwdriver and threw it at the friggin' plywood. Yeah, like a bang. It's like oh fuck, and the hell is that? that oh, weird, shit. like like feeling, emotion, psychological moment of fuck. I have to go to that side of the room to visually assess the scope of the damage. Yep. It's like, from here, I recognize this is bad. Now I have to go see how but bad it I is. I have to go see how bad. <laughs> and, and there's that moment of like, like, but I don't want to go look. Like, right, like, like infantile, like, but if I just stand here, it won't be bad. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? There's, there's that, that process of like. I can like, completely picture you having this internal conversation. So like, and it's, and it's, I mean, microseconds of like, just flashes of, of, but do I have to? Like, <laughs> Oh god! But if I don't go down there and look, it won't be <gasps> right. Bad. Like if I don't go down there, I won't know, and it'll all be okay. Like I can maybe maybe it just bounced off. Right? <laughs> like I can bullshit myself to say it missed, even though it is like like as you're looking down range, you can see it is square in the middle of it. Like you're like maybe, but just maybe, like it bent in the middle. Like yeah, maybe it just just the just the tip just maybe grazed it. <laughs> right like and it's such a surreal <laughs> moment of like 
self-internal justification of you ain't shit, your man. fuck up. How like, do you think I feel half the time? Like, I'm <laughs> shit, they're shooting. I mean, Christ, you figure between the arrows that I have, the inserts, the light-up knocks, and God forbid I'm using one of my broadheads, that's like 40, 50, 60 something dollars in some cases. I think the one arrow I totaled out, it was around almost $100 an arrow. Jesus Going Christ. down range. Right. One slip. That's a whole lot of money gone. God mm-hmm. forbid you smack two of them together and lose two at once. Right. You know, like that one set of uh, the titanium broadheads that I showed you. Right. Right. I mean, I have to be able to test them to make sure they're going to fly right. Yeah. God forbid one doesn't fly right and it freaking goes through like you know the side of the target into the freaking tree. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or 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 into the ground skips and cracks the arrow in half or who the hell knows what. Right. You know, so it's one of those like, yeah, it's it's when I go out, I'm not not just using like regular practice arrows. Like when I start actually using like my hunting arrows and broadheads and shit like that. Right. Oh, yeah. I draw back my ass puckers up and then I fucking release because <laughs> at any minute it's that <gasps> shit. Well, see, and that's one of the things that like part of me has the impulse to want to pick your brain about nuance of archery. Okay. But then the, I don't want to say the logical side, but then the, the mature side of me recognizes nothing I ask you is going to make it real for me. It's just going to inform me about your experience. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That doesn't change the fact that I want to know about your experience, but at the same time, I have to be honest with myself to recognize the motivation, and I don't mean this negatively, so please don't take it as an insult, but being honest with myself, the motivation for me asking you about more your experience is to better approach what well, yeah. I do. And it's, also and it's to, like, to that's be, not going to do that. Well, yes that's and no. That's just going to tell you about your experience. Okay, let's put it this way. If I fuck something up, and I learned the hard way, yeah, don't do that. If you ask me about something and I explained, yeah, no, don't do that. Right, right. That's not going to hinder you. Right, no, no, no. That's going to help you because you'll know what not to do because I've already dealt with it. No, absolutely. I absolutely recognize that. That ballpark of things is not what I'm referring to. Okay. For instance, as an example, I want to pick your brain about the difference in flight characteristics between field points and broadheads. Okay. Now, that's a whole conversation we can have. Uh Uh-huh. That said, your experience, because you have however many fucking, you know, years, damn near a lifetime of shooting a bow, is going to be totally different than... What I recognize, what I am aware of, and yeah. what I experience just starting out learning to shoot a bow. Oh, well, the hard thing is going to okay. be one of, there's two different factors. The, well, like, one major me, factor. Though? One big difference is I shoot a compound bow, you shoot a traditional bow. Right, right, So right. any any of those factors can be completely different experience. Right. No right, matter, right. if I sat there and said, this is an absolute you know, factor to keep in mind. It could be completely different for a traditional bow because I have no experience with those. Well, I right. don't know. But even separate to that, even if you were shooting a different, a, a, a quote-unquote traditional bow, recurve bow, the things that, because you've been shooting for damn near all your life, that you would notice mm-hmm. and you would be aware of, yeah, I am light years away from needing needing to worry about. Yeah. I'm needing to worry about, make sure it's in that direction. <laughs> like, <laughs> that is the extent of what I need to concentrate on right now. Yeah. Make sure my shoulders are square and not one's not lifted higher than the other. That's what I need to concentrate on right now. The amount of things that you would notice about differences in flight characteristics are miles away (laughs) 
from what I need to worry about. Yeah. I, I've also, you know, people are like, how the hell did you even see the arrow do that? I'm like, you couldn't tell? I mean, if you look right. at the tail, it's like, doing this. And they're like, right. And they're like, what? You like, saw that fast? I'm like, well, I'm watching what I'm doing. What, right. You and, don't? And that's <laughs> what I mean is you have that experience to be in the position to be aware of those things. Yeah. Whereas I am light years away from that where I am right now. That said, I still find it fascinating. But if I'm honest with myself, I find it fascinating on the one hand because I just like learning new things and and new information. Cool. But if I'm honest, there is a part of that that's like, well, maybe I can learn some trick. Maybe I can learn some insight. Maybe I can fucking get some little thing. And the reality, I recognize I am intelligent enough to understand that the reality is there is no trick. There is no insight that that's going to give me to allow me to develop the experience for me to one day, not right now, because right now I'm worried about, is it in that direction? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? But for one day to be able to recognize it. Okay. And there is no trick to it. So nothing that you tell me is going to, quote unquote, help me. It's data. Great. And it tells me about your experience. Great. But in general, like odds are, none of it's going to be useful for me figuring out I need to put the string here. (laughs) Like I need to have my shoulders this way. Well, see, like, that's yes that no. Like if, if I watched you shoot, and I watched what that's the arrows are doing, story. and I watched how you do it, then I could give you tips and pointers of how to make it easier or better for yourself. Right. That's because a then I could story. see what could possibly be going wrong. Right. Without me watching it, I can't tell you that. Oh well, if you do this, this is what it's going to do because I've never shot that kind of bow. Right. Well, not only that, that you've never shot that kind of bow, but on top of that, without you watching me and acting as a guide, referencing and commenting on my shooting, without that, yeah, you're telling me about your experience. Yeah. And it's not a matter of, well, your experience is your experience, man, and this is my... I'm not talking <laughs> about that shit. Okay. I'm talking no about new age bullshit for that one. what systematically informs you doesn't mean I'll notice it. Yeah. We talked earlier about a new puppy within the household. Yeah. And characteristics of that puppy. The things that you noticed about that puppy were dramatically different from the characteristics of that puppy that I picked up on. Yeah. Okay. It's not to say that the characteristics you picked up on were wrong. It's to say that the things that you picked up on worked for you. Yeah. But for me, don't work. Yeah. There is the boundary of scope of viability but within that boundary there is a lot of variance and what works for you within that boundary may not work for another person you know what i mean and so it's kind of like it it would be analogous to you teaching someone how to shoot archery okay i'm moonshine baby (laughs) (laughs) wow All right, I must be good and drunk because I totally <laughs> fucking heard Moonchild. No, I said it's my Moonshine baby. <sighs> I know, but that's how my brain took it. Was just like, oh, it's my Moonchild, and I'm like, what? Yeah, the fuck? well, I mean, kind of. Yeah. Moonshine baby, Moonchild. Yeah, it's just shortened. But it's that idea. <laughs> it's that idea where, like, within that realm of viability, you know. And that is important, and I think that doesn't get talked enough about, because all the new agey bullshit is like, well, it's whatever you want it to be, man. It's like, no, bullshit. You have to do these certain (laughs) things. But within doing those certain things, there's still a lot of variance. 
Yeah. Some people, when is speaking specifically about archery, some people pull the bow back to a preconditioned set of parameters to where they feel a certain specific tension in their shoulders. Yeah. Some people pull the bow back to a preconditioned set of parameters to where the bowstring is in a specific space on their face. Yeah. Some people pull the bow back to where it is preconditioned set of parameters to where they, they feel their thumb in a certain position on their face, mm-hmm. which is the right one. Well, that's a bad some people question. use all three. Right. And, and, and which is a the quote unquote right one is a bad question because there isn't a right one. It's whatever works for them. You see what I'm saying? As long as it is consistent it is within the Correct. parameters of consistency that even though I mean, it's within the parameters, there's still a lot of variation. Yeah. I mean, there's... me asking you which one you do isn't going to help me figure out what works best for you what works best for me and that's the problem that i'm facing is while i want to pick your brain because it's fascinating to me (laughs) i also recognize from a mature standpoint none of that information is going to actively work for me in figuring out within those parameters what works for me and the only thing that's going to work for me is the experience of practice of doing it like, does that make sense? What yes. I'm saying, like, I mean, like, to an extent, because if, for example, say drawing the bow back. Okay. Uh, now, if I explained how I do it or what works for me, and it's something you've never tried, you could try it and see if you like it better. Oh yeah. It may not tell you what's going to work better for you, but it gives you an option to try and see which one you like better. Right. 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 But Absolutely. again, there aren't there aren't going to be a lot of things like that yeah you know like i could sit there and say oh say for example you were hunting with it i could say oh try such and such broadhead because i had really good luck with it and really good success right well that's also coming out of a compound bow not a traditional bow well so it could be two completely different results and not only that but and and i think that that this is not only important to make this point clear but it is crucial to the argument that i'm making is that you saying try this i had a lot of luck with it is not some new agey hippy dippy bullshit about like oh well i felt good it is this broadhead had amazing flight characteristics i was able to recognize the flight characteristics of this broadhead and those really lined up with my preferences for flight yeah. characteristics. It took the boxes of everything I'm looking for. Right. Gotcha. I don't know what those boxes are. <laughs> in. Like, I don't even have the boxes to be able to understand whether that broadhead ticks them for me or not. I understand. Like, does that make sense? Yeah. And because you're and not at that point yet. crucial where it's like. Nothing is going to give me those boxes except practice. Correct. Why do you think I'm out there every day over the summer, like 50, 60 arrows a day? No. And that's what I mean. It's like, and I recognize that intellectually, that doesn't stop the impulse from going, but if I just ask him this, maybe he'll give me some secret. And it's like, and I have to like check myself to be like, no stupid. Well, that may be a great conversation. Well, that may be fun. Well, it may be cool to fucking learn that it's just not on a trivial. You. It's not going to do anything for giving you those boxes. It's yeah. not going to do anything for giving you that experience. Yeah. I mean, and even for me, the like, worst part is... And I have to, like, pull myself back <laughs> from that and go, look, you can still do this as long as you recognize that a good story is all you're going to get out of it. <laughs> and as long as you can maintain that, fine. But, but, but now... You're, but don't so, so, disappoint so it when so you don't inner, become Superman. So like, your inner monologue is going, but if I don't <laughs> ask, right, then I won't like, know. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, and it's that weird, like, juvenile inner monologue <laughs> of, like, 
but maybe I can get some insight. It's like, no, stupid, like, stop. <laughs> it's not going to help you. The only thing that's help you is get out on the range and fucking put arrows down range. That's it. There is yeah. no shortcut. To yeah, it. and you know then what slowly I mean? build up from there. And separate to that, you might be able to get a good story from your friend. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Like, yeah. like it's I said, a very separate thing. I think my biggest downfall for me is, like, for example, like, I'll have a set of arrows and broadheads and everything like that that work phenomenal right and then i'll always second guess myself of well what if i try this one what if this is better Mm -hmm. or all right well what if i try that arrow instead so you got the wanderlust what what if i take this arrow and i take like half an inch off of it or what if i add a little bit more weight to the front is it gonna fly better that's why i have fucking like seven dozen fucking arrows sitting over here because I'm so constantly you got tinkering that with the arrows. See, in in old tradition, that's what they called wanderlust. Oh yeah, it's, it was. It's, it's infected like everything that I have. Uh, right. <laughs> and okay, from a modern perspective, for most things, it is considered a good thing to constantly be trying, to constantly be striving, to constantly be experimenting, to constantly be learning. In our modern understanding, in our modern context, that's viewed as a positive thing. In ancient... Unless you're my bank account. <laughs> well. <laughs> in old times, in old tradition, wanderlust was a curse. It was something that you would go see the village healer for. It was something you went to go see the, the witch doctor or the priest or, or the person that could deal with spiritual matters to help cure your wanderlust it yeah, was no. it was that it was considered within that realm of curses and it's funny to see how like in our modern times it's like yeah this is considered a good thing whereas once upon a time that was like something you needed to be cured from you know um, i'm just <laughs> looking around this room and i'm going yeah yeah no <laughs> I'd, I'd say it's still a curse. Honestly, <laughs> the whole thing that, that that looking around this room, and granted this room has drastically changed from the last time we recorded in it. Yeah. Which, I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I think it looks awesome. I think it looks comfy. It's it, functional. I would love to have this room as a fucking workstation. <laughs> Just saying that. Okay. That said, the thing that is most screaming for my attention, or at least stands out to me the most is those two white containers, one of which says guitar and one of which says archery on top of each other in a stack. Yes. Which communicates to me that there is no organization. It is just, okay, those are in a pile and these are in a pile and these are in a pile. Actually, (laughs) those, those are, that's not even what's in those containers anymore. (laughs) I just never cleaned the marker off of it. <laughs> That's fucking funny. Oh my god, that is fucking hilarious. Oh. <laughs> it's a work in progress, folks. It's a work in progress. Yeah, well, I just moved everything from one room to another room. I still gotta sort through everything and put it away. Right? Like, ain't that the truth of fucking how it always goes. But it, it's definitely, it's, it's a lot more workroom than what I had before. Oh, yeah. It is, it is even though it doesn't look like it right now, it is actually a lot more organized than what it was before. Yeah. So. And on that note. You're out of beverage. I'm out of beverage, and I gotta go to the bathroom, so. It's the pee-pee song. Pee-pee break. And now, for a station break. Pee-pee. 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 P
smokeified and peified. Peified. Yeah, that works. Yeah. All right. So you peed and you got drunker. Yes, I for whatever reason peed and got drunker because I don't fucking know how that fucking works, but. <laughs> yeah, all right. All right, so... I can't even remember what fucking, like... Of uh, the art show thing that I wanted to show you, so fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> fuck that shit. <laughs> well, okay, so the name of the art show is 13 Gifts of Poe Xanadu. Yeah. Okay. All I have in my notes is 13th Gift Next, which, in my brain speak means <laughs> one of the things I want to talk about is the next uh, in the iteration of the 13 gifts. Yeah. Oh, fuck if I remember which one that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, then. We'll touch so, on that. Well, let's come we, back to that one. Yeah, we'll table we'll, that for now. Right. Christ almighty. All right. So, <laughs> one of the other things I wanted to get to. Okay. Are you ever going to make the PP song what? Cut the fuck out. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at my goddamn notes. I look up and you're fucking like teabagging your microphone. What the fuck? I, I just wait for a response. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, I honestly, I kind of like just stopped even dealing with the PB song because you had the one that you were inserting in there from Mikey singing it. Oh, uh, okay. So before we get to the other thing I want to touch on. And the other thing I want to touch on is short, so it's not a bigger deal. One of the things that I wanted to do with the first podcast of each season, in line with that year in review, okay, uh -huh. is just to touch on when you think about the conversations that we've had over the past year and the different bullshit that we've fucking talked about in the past year. What stands out to you? As we've been getting ready for this podcast, as I've been thinking about it, and when I think about the past year and the conversations we've had, as far as, like, shit that has stood out to me as, like, yeah, I remember that conversation. Those are good conversations. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So, here's what I got. And while I go through these, you think of, or if any of these spark any things for you, you think of stuff that's like popped out for you over the past year that we've talked about in these podcasts. Okay. Huh. One of the things that stands out is some absolute bullshit I pulled. And it started out as just a one-off bullshit and it just kept rolling is every time we do the podcast, after I do the editing, I'll do a title card for it, which has the yeah. like a, a brief synopsis of like the different topics we touched on. Uh -huh. And early on in this year that we've been doing this podcast, one of the things I touched on was why Mike hates insert then, yeah, whatever whatever yeah like and so like i think it started out with like why I, mike hates eskimos yep, or something yep, like that the like, first episode was why mike and, hates eskimos and, and so it became this thing of like it just started out as a one-off and it just kind of like every episode just had one perpetuated <laughs> and it was absolute bullshit but for whatever reason i absolutely love doing it <laughs> i'm just figuring out what is the most incendiary <laughs> volatile like <laughs> clickbaity bullshit that i can fucking figure out yeah, of yeah. like why mike hates yeah, you know like, what I, mean? um, I i did not see <laughs> what you put down for the last episode i can't remember and there's been a couple that honestly i think i've skipped where it's on, just like on, yeah if i'm listening to it on spotify it doesn't show me that title card right but if yeah. i click on it through youtube then it does well, sadly, on uh, uh, YouTube, it's also on the website, but that's a whole yeah. separate matter. The point is that I get what you're saying about, you know, accessibility to that information. Yeah, yeah. Separate to that is still is, is for whatever reason. Oh, and, no, and, that's why I just, I gave up getting aggravated over it. I'm like, <laughs> I didn't say I hate Eskimos. I'm like, you know what? Well, Fuck it. That it's, was, it's not going to change. That <laughs> was the thing is like, initially, there was like that 
12 second like <laughs> what the fuck dude and then it was like yeah and for whatever reason that stuck in my craw of like nope we're doing this every yeah. goddamn time fuck you <laughs> like i don't know why it's just so it's, it's, that, it, it's that little bit of payback that you get <laughs> it's just a five-year-old going like dookie he's a dookie yeah. like it's, it's stupid but it's just it makes me giggle so that's yeah. one of the things that okay. stood out to me um the way we started out season one just the oh, very just... <laughs> start of us just fucking dying laughing over oops i forgot the power button <laughs> yeah for 45 minutes <laughs> right like to me that is just so exemplary of everything we're about everything we do yeah we're not perfect we're never not claimed to fucking, be fucking you know incredible we get the shit done <laughs> it may not be in the way you thought it was gonna yeah, be exactly. it may not fit your <laughs> criteria hopefully it'll be entertaining but <laughs> oh i'm i am more than certain there are things that i've said that have pissed somebody off oh i'm I sure am like more than certain like, there are things i've said that have pissed our friends off yeah like but the fact is is that or or it left them completely speechless well, With a, did he really just <laughs> say that type response? Well, and the thing is, is that it, it's one, it's not just a matter of that that is the entirety and extent of what you've said. No. Okay. But along with that, too, it is the fact that the quality of the thought and the intonation and meaning and the, the dare I say, compassion and sincerity mm -hmm. with which you say anything. The fact that you are one of the few people that doesn't, bullshit and front your way through life no. no and that even if there is something that you say which may be offensive it is clear from anyone listening that you're not saying it to get a sound might you're not saying it to appeal to a certain base you're no. not saying it to get airtime you're not saying it for some ulterior motive other than this is your experience and you're going to be honest about that I, and i think that that honesty even in spite of whatever offense you may cause that honesty is not only so refreshing but so valuable and valued by people that know you that it's like holy shit even if he's an asshole sometimes i'm still glad to fucking know him and be able to talk to him or be able to like engage on that level because yeah. i know he's real you know and, and i mean that sentiment is greatly appreciated i mean i don't intentionally during the podcasts i don't intentionally say something <laughs> To piss somebody off or offend somebody intentionally. Mind you, that 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 that's specifically clarified during the podcast. Yes, exactly. Other times, yeah. game on. Exactly, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> well, babe, come on, it's not inaccurate. <laughs> oh, okay. Just remember, I never claimed to be the nice guy. Right. Just saying. No. Um... <laughs> That's the other thing that I think is fucking awesome is the fact that somehow I ended up as the nice yeah, guy right? and the voice exactly. is reason. Like, my insane How did ass... you end up the good cop? <laughs> right, like, it's like, wait, what? Alright, we'll roll with it. But oh. no, I mean, I don't intentionally say stuff to, to offend people or piss them off. It's just depending on the topic. skill you have. <laughs> it, it, well, it is. It is. It really is. You know, like you said, I think... I think it might have been the last podcast, or the, or the one prior to that, one or the other... Where, you know, you had said, you know, it's my, like, innate natural ability to just bring out this guttural <laughs> honesty out of people. Right? And, and for them to just, before they even realize it, they're 
they're saying what they actually feel. Yeah. Outside of the filter and then catch uh, themselves after the fact. Yeah, it's one of those. And then they're like, oh shit, I shouldn't have said that. Did I just say that with my outside voice? Oh, damn it. Oh, right. And it's like, yeah, no, see, thank you for being honest. Right. You're a prick too. And, <laughs> and that's the thing is that, that differentiation between outside of the fact that I may disagree with you vociferously. Outside of the fact that I may think that that is an abhorrent view, at least you were fucking honest about it. At least you had the fucking integrity to admit that that's what you really feel. Well, you know I, what I mean? I, the thing is, to go with that, I can also admit when I'm wrong or if I've learned something that changed my view. Right, but that that's separate to what I mean. No, and I get that, like, but I'm also saying I can admit that. And yeah. I understand that I'll, there are a lot of people out there that can't. Oh, because yeah. Because the, the, they'll lose too much face if if they, you know, have to admit they were wrong or right, that they didn't know something. Right, yeah. What the fuck? I ain't got a face to begin with, so what the fuck do I care? Right. But even separate to that, like I was saying, like that innate ability to get people to, like, say what they actually think. It's that moment of... Oh, I find if you ruffle the feathers enough, the truth comes out. Right. It's, it's that moment of, okay, thank you for being honest. You're an asshole, and I hate that viewpoint, but thank you for fucking being yeah. honest about it for once. You know, um, like a, you know, a friend of mine. Now we can have a real conversation about, like, the issue. Exactly. You I know. mean, a friend of mine posted something, I don't know, something regarding racism, whatever, on Facebook type shit, right? And uh, just, you know, for whatever reason, he put, you know... Option A is you're not paying attention or something of that nature. Right. You know, option B is, you know, check the comment section. Well, I log in, I look at the comments, I'm like, there's nothing here. What the fuck? Right. So I'm like, nothing. You got nothing. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, he's like, ha ha ha, you know, you're funny. I was like, well, come on, dude. I at least expected, like, you know, uh, some sort of, you know, what the fuck, you're an asshole type comment, whether sarcastic or not, but nothing you leave me hanging what the fuck right right and right. You know, he's like oh well, i just meant you know if you go on to any of these other pages and you look at their comments it's all you know uh, like nazi propaganda shit and all this other stuff like that because he's just he, he thinks he knows every detail of every fucking aspect right and i wasn't gonna feed into it at that point but i'm like you know what just a plain and simple statement that's pretty much why i ignore people right because way too many people open their fucking mouths when they should be opening their fucking eyes and I sat back after I typed that, and I realized that in some cases, I'm one of those people. Right. In some cases, I am one of those people that I'll, turn, I'll sit there and I'll instinctually respond to something with how I feel rather than with anything knowledge-based. Right, right, right. The problem is not that I responded. The problem is not that I put how I feel. The problem is there are far too many people that look at that as, oh, that's wrong. Because it's not fact-based. Right. It's No, a person having feelings or having an idea or opinion on a subject, regardless of whether it's emotion-based or whether it's factual-based, does not change the fact that they have a feeling or opinion about it. You can't sit there and say they are wrong wow. for having a feeling or opinion about it. Their feeling or opinion may be unjustified, right? but they're not right. wrong for having one. Right, right. The, That's the, what I'm trying to get at. Right. And I think that, and maybe this is applying my own myopic experience, and, and I acknowledge that, to the situation. It may be a case of that. That said, it at least seems to me that there isn't enough distinction or appreciation of the difference between or acknowledgement of, I recognize you feel that way. And though the data and the scientific fact and the reality doesn't indicate that. Mm hmm none of that stuff changes that feeling correct and addressing the feeling is entirely a separate function of the data itself and i think that the distinction between those two points is not regularly acknowledged 
nor appreciated that they are different things. And that's correct. You the, know, the, the difference being the distinction between those two points is left out. Yeah. And far too often, the emotional and quote unquote feeling response is touted as fact. Yeah. It's, but it's not. I feel this way, so that must be the way it is. And exactly. It's like, that's it's not, not how life it's works. not how it works. So like, I heard a great phrase this month. It was one of those, like, I heard it, and it was like, oh, okay, cool. It barely even registered. Mm -hmm. Days later, I'm laying in bed half asleep thinking about it. Like, it, it had that, like... Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Like, so it, it was like, one of those, like like brain slivers. Yeah. And just, like, all of a sudden, like, it's just like, what the fuck? Why am I thinking about that now? Right. Uh, like, it simmered. Oh, shit. Okay, as yeah. This <laughs> amazingly profound statement. The statement was something I'm paraphrasing to the effect of just because you have a sandwich doesn't mean world hunger isn't an issue. Yeah. Exactly. That's how I took it. I was like, yeah, okay. Whatever. Like, go on with the rest of the sentence and everything else. I thought you were going to say just because it, it doesn't look pretty doesn't mean it doesn't taste infected. <laughs> but, it, like, <laughs> days later, I'm just like, that is an amazingly profound statement. Yeah. Of like, I think I've, I've there heard is it somewhere. A vast, and that statement is indicative of not only the disparity of the experiential perception versus the reality, but also indicative of it is not to say that one is more valid or important than the other. The the yeah. experience of you having a sandwich is critically important to your life. Yeah. I actually had a really good sandwich earlier. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, you also have to recognize just because I exist within this certain scope of experience doesn't mean the rest of the world has that same experience mm -hmm. like it's an amazingly profound statement and fucking it, it just kind of like sat with me for a few days and i was like damn like that <laughs> fucking like weaseled its way in like God, deep like, Fuck. <laughs> i'm uh, hungry <laughs> all right so other conversation we'll run through this real quick conversations stuck out with me it wasn't a specific conversation, but it was the various instances where I've had the opportunity to touch on evidence of the art cult bullshit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not just one thing where I've been like, ha, see, the art world is bullshit. Like, it's, I've been able to present, like, point after point after yeah. point of, yeah. like, no, 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 I'm not talking out my ass. I understand that you're not in the art world. No, but the fact is but that here's in some of those cases like, that I'm not involved in the art world, and I've found a shit that was bullshit. Right. And I'm like, dude, did you know about this? And you're like, yeah. And I'm like, well, that's fucking bullshit. And, like, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, that's kind of what we're dealing with here. <laughs> like, it, it's insane. Yeah. But the amount of times that I've been able to, to reference that or, or indicate that are times where you brought that up. It's like, to me, that stands out as like okay yeah i'm not just like imagining this and no. like on a soapbox no it really is that insane which validates and to some extent justifies like okay my pursuit in my business of trying to present a different model and trying to approach this differently Okay, no, I'm on the right track. Yeah. Even yeah. though it may be difficult, and even though it's a slow process, and even though fucking it may take years, it's still, no, 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 I'm not just imagining this in my head. It's that fucking batshit crazy, and there's a need for providing what a better doing. model. Yeah. Like, okay, cool. I feel better about myself. <laughs> like, it's a very, Yay! like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> weird, but that's one of the things that stands out of me. Let's see. Other things that stood out to me. PP song. Well, yeah. The evolution uh, and iteration of the PP song <laughs> is just awesome. And the fact that it's become this thing of what it is now yeah. just <laughs> makes me giggle. Every time you add it in. The, the <laughs> fucking multiple episode 
iterations of the gun debate that we had. <laughs> because yeah, it ended up yeah. being like like over the course of like three or four episodes. <laughs> we had like the yeah, I like the one very, where like all right, we're not going to get involved with firearms this episode. However, ten minutes later. <laughs> <laughs> So, that so really... this fucking shooting happened, and this is bullshit. Right. And they... <laughs> I really like this eggnog moonshine. <laughs> that eggnog moonshine is fucking dangerous. Yeah, no I shit. Gonna fucking lo- like that. Yeah. Um, there's pretty much half the fucking container in here. <laughs> well, not anymore. There was. Uh, yeah, that that. I gotta go get more of this. You're coming over for the uh, birthday party, right? Fuck yeah. I have no idea what you're talking about, but fuck yeah. I told you last weekend. You expect me to remember anything from last weekend? <laughs> <laughs> Valid point. Never mind. <laughs> okay. All right. For the listening audience. We... I believe I said it on Saturday, though. <laughs> I could be wrong. <laughs> last weekend, we were supposed to record this podcast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We just ended up getting shit faced anyway. The <laughs> good news is we figured out the formula for stupid juice. Yes. We um, have a verified formula, proven right? formula for stupid yeah. juice. So drunken sorcery exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> if you take <laughs> here is the official recipe for stupid juice. Fifty percent kraken. You. 25% eggnog. 25% moonshine. Now, if it's a mix of moonshine and eggnog, like Mr. Mike's drinking. Me. Then you go 50% of that mix. Yeah. And mix it. So basically what stupid juice is, is half you, half me. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, pretty much. We got this. (laughs) So, so trust me, Ashley, it tastes really fucking good. Oh, and you God, get yeah. stupid fucking hammered. <laughs> and the thing is, and, and, and he, here, here's the the one and only warning that I will give: sit down before you drink it, because <laughs> you taste it. It tastes like spiced eggnog. No problem. Then you stand. Two up. minutes and forty eight <laughs> seconds later. That's because you go there three is quarters a, of the glass now. There is an elf <laughs> that comes by, pulls a two by four out of its trousers, and smacks you squarely across <laughs> the back of the head and will sit you down <laughs> if you are not. Because there is a clear. Did and, you happen to catch the elf's name? Look. <laughs> outside of whether. The elf's name was actually Arnold or not. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Whether or not that was actually its name. <laughs> when you're hit in the back of the head with a two by four and told, it's time to sit down, son. <laughs> you tend to listen. You kind of go with like, like, yeah, um, so, so, so that's the official recipe. Do you coherently remember my brother approaching you with his pants unzipped, like he was gonna fucking mushroom stamp your head because you said something to him? <laughs> with that look on your face, apparently not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, he had enough of you basically calling him out about not standing up for what he said he was gonna do, and he's like, you know what? Fine, fuck it, I'll do it right now. Stood up, unzipped his fucking pants, started reaching in his fucking pants, and you're like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm good, dude. I'm just kidding. Ah. <laughs> I was gonna say, please tell me I opened my mouth. Like, no, no. Actually, I think you, I think you, you said something about doing that. Like, uh, go ahead, whip it out, see what I do. Like, type response. But you're like, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm just playing. With you. I'm just messing with you. Like, type, like, just blew it off or whatever. And he was just like, oh, like he was really gonna do it, and you almost like he almost felt let down because he couldn't. <laughs> I feel disappointed in myself now. I was just trying to not, like, see what see, was going on, and I'm like, I'm see, looking this over is here. Proof. Stupid juice will make you disappointed in yourself. <laughs> Fucking shit. <laughs> God damn. Uh, I'll tell you what. You can try and reenact the moment <laughs> at the birthday party, and we'll see what happens. I'll let y'all know what happens. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> There's going to be like a five minute little excerpt added into the fucking podcast. <laughs> All right. Post party update. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> I got oh. fucking hammered again. I don't remember shit. <laughs> Dude, I'm not even going to lie. Like, you you're... know we had to hold you up down the hallway, right? You set my CO2 detector off because you whacked into it with your shoulder. What? So you, you hit, yeah, you hit the test button on the CO2 detector. Dude. And so then I got on one side of you and he got on the other side. We're basically holding you up going down the hallway. Like you're playing like like the bowling ball in between the bumpers going down the lane. <laughs> and it's just, it's me and him on each side. It was fucking hilarious. Okay. Not for nothing. Yes, I'm currently drunk. But one, I'm nowhere near dr- that drunk. And two, in my current state of drunk, I can still ascertain that I am sincere enough to say that we have definitively categorized that as the recipe for stupid juice for a reason. For a valid reason, (laughs) yeah. Uh, Let's see, what else did you do? Oh, you're in the bathroom taking a piss, right? Now, you had yelled out through the door, I'm going to sit down because I'm afraid to stand up. I might fall over. Okay. Oh, no, that's not the best. That, that that was like, uh, uh, oh, okay, so now we all know Crow's going to sit down to pee. <laughs> then, after about ten minutes of you being in there and there's no noise, so we're going, are you okay? Are you, is everything all right? Are you awake in there? Is everything okay? Because we didn't hear you fall over or something, so we're like, what the fuck's going on? I'm going to just open the door and find out. You're going in like a almost crying sort of like... I feel really dumb right now, five-year-old type voice. I'm trying to figure out how to work my pants. (laughs) So, yeah. It is called stupid juice for a fucking reason. (laughs) Yeah. That, um... (laughs) I love you, but fuck you. Um, <laughs> you want me to keep going? <laughs> partly Let, okay, yes and let's, partly let's no. Put it, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. I'm not going to keep on going, but <gasps> if anything you think I'm wrong about, you can ask my wife or you can ask my brother without me even in the room. No. And I guarantee you get no, the same story. Like, it's not that. It's more of just from anyone else I'd be like, ha ha, ha yeah, sure. Uh-huh. From you? <laughs> I'm like, fuck. All right, that means that I actually did that shit and uh you, you I don't remember a goddamn thing. Well, bit I mean, you basically it. passed out in front of the TV. Like you laid down on the floor petting the dog. Literally, it was like 30 seconds face down on the floor you like pet the dog maybe five times i had my ass up (laughs) yeah yeah yeah. face down ass up passed out nice for like 30 seconds on the floor you pet the dog about like four times and your hands started slowing down a little bit and then next thing we know i'm like dude come on you gotta get up come on you gotta get up and go to bed and you're like what (laughs) Like, I just woke you up. I'm like, were you really just fucking sleeping? What the fuck? Okay. Mind you, you see the amount of dog toys that are out in the living room, right? You're, like, laying on top of most of them. So, that really could not have been comfortable, but I'm pretty sure you were drunk enough, you didn't feel them anyway. Oh, shit. Okay, so, so, I will reiterate. <laughs> that with this recipe for stupid juice we are not held responsible or liable in any form or fashion because, whatsoever because there is <laughs> unlike many forms of alcohol for instance the rum and coke I'm drinking yeah I'm aware of what I'm saying I'm gonna remember this tomorrow yeah like I'm still still with it i'm a little bit slow but i'm still with it yeah and if i drank more it would get more and more iterative of that 
What yeah. the fuck did I do? That said, Stupid Juice did not have that. Stupid no. Juice is you're with it, you're with it, you're with it, you're suddenly not. Yeah, like you said, the fucking elf comes around with the two by four smacks in the back of the head. It, it very much is a, by the way, you're drunk. You're <laughs> drunk now, and you're stupid now. You're not just drunk. You're stupid drunk. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, there, there's, there's Well, I mean, that. also, you, you're taking, like, a full-size pint glass. You filled it up about three-quarters of the way, and then chugged about three-quarters to four-fifths <laughs> of it down. After the first sip, you're like, wow, that's really good. Gulp, 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 <laughs> gulp, gulp. I need a refill. Yeah, it goes down. That may have been part too. of the issue of why all of a sudden you went from sober to drunk. So, so, so what you're saying is we need more research. Yes, yes. <laughs> all so, right. you know, if everybody does the same thing. They chug down a full pint glass first, and if they all have the same reaction, then that's what we have to put on the directions. This is how you drink it. <laughs> right. Instructions for use. <laughs> Oh, shit. All right. So, things that stood out to me. Fuck. <laughs> I can't wrap this up. Cause fucking, yeah. Um, you're ending that one podcast as Christopher Walken. <laughs> <laughs> that stood out to me. Just that All whole right. end was just like, you know what? <laughs> that was fucking epic. Like, yeah. So... You're saying I need to do some more, <laughs> and then you can wrap up the podcast. Shortly, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So that's to out to me. So um, keep going down your list. The, I want to hear the, more. The episode of Stupid Juice? Yes, that was a good one. Um, I have no idea what the fuck I mean. <laughs> okay, so here's the problem when with, your notes don't even make sense to here's you. Here's the problem with keeping lists. All right. I keep very brief and curt notes, and most of the time, like this entire list, it's made sense to me. What does it say? Maybe I can help. It says guests versus reality. <laughs> guests versus reality? Yeah. Maybe because when we have guests on, it's more of a, just a laugh and talk and have a good time. Whereas when it's just the two of us, it's more specific topic based. I, I don't know. I don't know the fucking idea. Okay, so so the whole point about me writing notes is because I won't remember. Yeah, that's how. If the I don't now. understand the note, it doesn't fucking help. I don't fucking remember what the. You, you got fuck? some shitty notes. You yeah. need to get somebody to do that for you. <laughs> I know a guy. Oh, shit. So... Does your mother sew? <laughs> you need a point. <laughs> Get her to sew that. Sorry. All right. So, so... I just love that part there, of that There's movie. one more thing, and that's what I want to end on. Okay. But before I do that, all of that said, all, all of that grand list of things over the last year, conversations that we've had that stood out to me... Is there anything that you have that you can think of that stands out to you or like that that sparks in your your thought processes? You know what I mean? I mean for me, a lot of it was some of the shit with the art world because okay. I didn't realize how fucked up it really was. Okay. Going back through the podcast, listening to different things kind of gave me a few ideas of stuff we could do for new or future podcasts. Okay. Such as one is you and I actually go to a upscale hoity-toity fucking art gallery. <laughs> And we do a recording critique of the artwork. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> because no one's going to know what we're looking at. We just describe it. Look right? at this fucking piece of shit. It's a big we fucking silver it like bean. A fucking what the weird... fuck is that shit? We could do it like a weird, like, like trivia game where we're at the end of it. We do a separate, like, you know, plug-in recording of like. By the way, here's the artwork we actually looked at. Put like a multiple choice fucking answer sheet on the on the, uh, oh, the uh, that uh, website a, that yeah. they can download, check off, and then mail in. Oh. And whoever actually gets the most answers right. We'll have some sort of fucking epic prize for him. That would be fucking awesome. Because I was actually going to send you yeah. a message saying, like, you know what? 
me, you, in the city, some sort of fucking art gallery, and we're doing a live critique. Yeah, that would be fucking epic. <laughs> Come on, that'd be fucking awesome. That would Cause be. Because you get your artistic perspective and my just brutal honesty of like, this is yeah. a piece of shit. <laughs> what yeah. the fuck is that? That would be Wait, fucking Wait, you're asking awesome. how much for that? I'd wipe my ass with less money. <laughs> what the fuck? That would be fucking awesome. No, me, like, seriously, I would wipe my ass with hundred dollar bills before I spent that much money on that shit. That what the would fuck be is your problem? Awesome. <laughs> All right, plans for the future. Yeah, exactly. All right, so what else you got? Let's see. Other things that stood out in throughout the past year. I think we've grown as a podcast. When, uh, when we grown, first, baby. Yeah. <laughs> we we did a little bit of swelling. Um, <laughs> That came out great. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, well, like I said, when we started this, it was, you know, the two of us, a single microphone, and just sitting in front of my computer. Right. Now, you know, we have a, a dedicated recording space. Granted, it's my workshop, but it's still, it's a dedicated space where we don't have the dogs drinking water in the background <laughs> or the uh, the TV from the living room going off or anything like that. God damn it, I love your dogs, but that damn fucking <laughs> collar jingling, fucking trying to take out fucking each instance of tingle, 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 tingle. Exactly, exactly. <sighs> yeah, you know, and that looks like now we've got the, the two-way splitter, we've got, you know, two microphones, we've got, you know, the laptop with the program on it. All the, it, it's we've we've grown we've enhanced it's like the we're program. Professional and shit. I wouldn't even go that far. No, no, <laughs> definitely not. No, no. We are still a garage <laughs> podcast. Um, <laughs> meaning you'll find the recordings of this at the bottom of somebody's garage, um, <laughs> right next to their <laughs> antique Playboys. Ne- yeah, next to the antique Playboys. You and to give about oil that for a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I just had the fucking weird thought of like at some point. Playboy is going to become antique. Did you ever think about that for a second? I, I do now. <laughs> like, there are going to be people... But, I mean, there's vintage ones now anyway. Right, but not just vintage of, like, oh, yeah, that was a previous generation, but antique. The same way we look at erotica in Pompeii, of, like thousands of years ago okay like you know what i mean so like 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 for example like people nowadays would look at like old like betty page photos no the way like, people nowadays would look at old greek frescoes uh mm. well, <laughs> i'm like can you believe this shit that they were into they like chicks with boobs <laughs> <laughs> I hope at no point <laughs> in the U.S. future that people without boobs, <laughs> w- women without boobs, aren't found sexy and appreciated. <laughs> I mean, granted, okay, I know that came out wrong because I, no, because I like thinking about it, and I'm like, no, wait, because that makes it sound like if a chick has like really small tits or something like that, then she's not sexy or appreciated. And that's not my point. What I'm saying is, like, you're, you're, you're making it sound like they have them surgically removed. Right. That, right? Look, you can't necessarily infer long-term generational of what will be, and it might be that. Okay. That well, let's put it this way. I hope, for humankind's sake, <laughs> at no point are females' tits ever taken off completely because that's just wrong <laughs> you god damn it <laughs> that that that's just you not right you realize this is going on the title card of why my case mastectomies <laughs> you're an asshole <laughs> okay <laughs> yes alright I, I, I can try to save this <laughs> no no <laughs> But I kind of don't want to. <laughs> it's like, whatever. Oh, shit. I hate something. <laughs> well, I just want to roll with it. <laughs> Anybody that knows me yeah, knows damn well. Yeah, you're going to get fucked one yeah. way or another. Yeah. It's just a matter of, like, what you're... Yeah. yeah. I haven't oh, figured out if it's, Christ. you know, Lexington Steel or Ron Jeremy yet, but I'm getting <laughs> fucked either way. <laughs> oh, shit. 
Of course, now I just made a whole entire new you know search history of people that don't know who the two are. Right? Who's like, Lexi like can a, steal? Like <laughs> Google and see the search trend spike. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh shit! Be like, why am I popular again? Like, yeah. <laughs> for anybody wondering, go ahead and try the Great American Challenge. I dare you. Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> oh. Right. There's so, a challenge for young kids nowadays. <laughs> oh fuck! Look, like young kids don't have swing enough this like a baseball bat against your head, against your friend's head, <laughs> and see if you can stay standing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so before I get to the last thing, we wrap. But you have to videotape because I want to see somebody get smacked face first <laughs> with a big black dong <laughs> right across the head, <laughs> swung like it's a baseball bat. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Boom! Hey, better, 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 better. <laughs> hey, where's the balls on that thing? <laughs> All right, so before I get to the last thing, we wrap this up. All right, go ahead. Is there any, anything else that stands out to you over the last year that it's like, yeah. The amount of fun, fun we've had doing this. Fuck and just, yeah. and just the, the, the not really giving a shit. Not not caring, you know, what other people kind of think or feel about it. It's because let's face it. I mean, whether we have one person listening, nobody oh my listening, God, I or just remember what listening, that note meant. What? That's what that note meant. Oh, so okay. Currently, this year we've had two guests on, and in the coming year, I want to have yes more. I want to be very very clear. One, I appreciate the guests that we've had on. Two, I'm happy for the guests that we've had on. And three, it is not to say that the the guests that we had on were bad or to find fault with them in any way. I want to make that absolutely fundamentally clear. No, because even though they might not have been our normal style, they were still fun episodes to do. Absolutely. Okay. And I want to make that absolutely clear. That said... One of the things that stands out to me is that the guests we had on specifically didn't listen to any of the podcasts before we had them on. Okay. Okay. Non-intentionally not listened to, but... Right. They just didn't. didn't. Sure, there's some people, and even if I'm honest, a part of me that's like, what the fuck? You didn't even fucking listen to, like, what we are doing before? But aside from that, there's also part that's like, Okay, but it it's honest and raw. Yeah. Okay. And in that raw honesty, there is still that bias of approach of, oh, so it must be like this podcast. Or yeah, it must no. be like, <laughs> like that preconceived idea of, okay, so you're trying to do this. And it's like, no, nope, no, we're close. not. What we've said as far as we get drunk and have a conversation, that's what we're doing. That's it. Like, like, (laughs) and going back and listening through that lens, listening through that filter of like, oh, it's supposed to be like this. And then they realize that it's not. And then we come fucking immediately after whatever they say that that has that feeling with something out of fucking left yeah. field. That's I'm going to be all intellectual and stuff. I Meanwhile, well, I'm going, yeah, show me your tits. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. It's a, and, and it's like hearing in real time that train wreck <laughs> yeah. of just that, that. <laughs> Their psyche just goes, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, wait, what did you just say? Okay, I'm not in Kansas anymore <laughs> exactly. type like thing. Entertained me to no end. Train came off the tracks and they never even applied the brakes. <laughs> right. And and that aspect of the past year made me smile. Like uh, on a number of different levels. Did you giggity? I giggity. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah. So, not trying to interrupt, but it was, sim- oh, no. it was similar in that same yeah. vein of, yeah. like, the guests we've had and how they approached it <laughs> was fascinating to me. One of the best parts, and, and I honestly, between both guests, there's, like, one key statement that was said All right. on each episode. 
that stands out the most of that whole episode. I honestly don't remember if he said his name in the podcast or not. Carl? When the big guy yeah, yeah, says, Carl. I think I can taste purple. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Yep. <laughs> Carl tasting purple. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, my brother, we were talking about the, the whiskey and stuff. <laughs> and it's comparing, it's like comparing like, like Ethiopians or something like that to, to, to Oh Jews. my God. <laughs> and, like, and the fact that like, <laughs> even through all of that, even through all of the drunken, poor communication, <laughs> Assuming that so okay, I need to to put a pause into this to clarify. I, I feel at least for the audience. Okay, go ahead. Like we've talked about multiple times, none of this is scripted. When I talk about editing the podcast, it's not that I'm editing it to change how something comes across or make something politically correct or oh god no or, or i wouldn't have any sound bites at or, all <laughs> right or like change something to to be quote unquote socially acceptable when i edit the podcast all i'm doing is going through and taking out the pregnant pauses the 30 seconds of me trying to figure out what the next word that I'm supposed to say <laughs> in that sentence is. Yeah. Or like, you know, if I cough or right. one of us or moves like, and that bumps the table and makes noise or something. Bumps the table <laughs> and makes noise or something. Bumps the table and makes noise or something. Right. Or stuff like that. It's It's just the only thing that I'm editing for is things that make the podcast less enjoyable from a sound quality standpoint to listen to the content of the subject matter and the content of the conversations that we get into none of that gets changed none of that gets addressed the only thing that can arguably be even tiptoed upon that is if one of us says something that because we have such an extent of history and have known each other for so long that you and I know what we mean. Yeah. But listening to it back soberly <laughs> from the, the, the filtered standpoint of how would someone who doesn't know us, how would this sound? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sometimes there are certain things where, yeah, that would sound a little weird. So let me take out this one part, not to change the nature of what is said, but to more line up with what we actually feel and what we actually mean. Yeah. Okay. That said as a caveat. Knowing your brother as I do, <laughs> the amount of editing that I had to do, aside from... <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, laughing my ass off right now at this whole thing. <laughs> aside from all the pregnant pauses and us, and I can't tell you how many times I literally, <laughs> out loud, while editing, said, look, you motherfucker, if you say... Do you know what I mean? One more time. <laughs> I'm going to fucking travel to fucking your state and punch you in the face as I'm listening to this pre-recorded fucking you know recording. I mean? <laughs> that aside, there was one small part where what literally came out of his mouth did not convey what I know he meant what is clear of the character of his person. Yeah. Because there is a lot that is not conveyed through paraverbal syntax of gesture and facial expression and oftentimes, even though it's recorded, intonation and 
body yeah. language and things like that that doesn't come across. And without that, it sounds like this is being said, and this is not what's being said. In fact, it's the opposite. Yeah, yeah. And so trying to manage that to make what comes out in the audio, the audio actually align with what was intended yeah. was a nightmare. That said, all, all of that is a predicate. Yeah. The fact that at the end of the goddamn podcast, <laughs> he was like, by the way, sorry for that giant clusterfuck <laughs> of blah, 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 blah. So I couldn't just fucking clip the whole thing and pretend like it never happened. No, no, you got to fucking bring it up, you asshole. <laughs> Fuck you. Now I not only have to leave it in, but on top of that, I have to figure out how to goddamn edit it to get who you actually are to come across the way you actually are. Good, bad, and indifferent. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like, you're halfway through it, you're like, alright, cool, I got this. And then at the end of it, he's like, yeah, monkey wrench, fuck off. Right, just like, really? Alright. I love you. Back to square one. But... Fuck me, goddamn. Yeah. So yeah, that that was a fucking anyway. So like I was saying though, you know, out of the guests we've had, those like you know, two key things that that stood out was, was those comments because both of those comments, your face was literally like, what the fuck? Like you know, <laughs> this like huge question mark, and it's like. Not understanding, but one of those, fuck, that, you just made that, my life harder. Now I gotta edit all this shit. How do I edit that? Like, your brain's going a million miles an hour, well, but you're also stuck on the, did they really just say that? Like, look on your face. Well, and that's the thing is, because even though I may be squarely shit-faced drunk right now, <laughs> I still have a part of my brain devoted to... <laughs> Not last weekend. <laughs> Yeah, last week it was a different story. But there's a part of my brain devoted to how will this sound just from the audio. Yeah. And that aspect of it ignores the entirety of, like I said, things like proverbial syntax, things like fucking intonation, things like fucking body language, you know, gestural, facial, facial. <laughs> Fuck you. Facial expression. <laughs> I swear to God, facial should be a word. Oh, it is now. Facial expression. And you want a facial? <laughs> that facial shit. So I could be like, That's, oh yeah. Is that hit. drunk Bukaki? <laughs> so, so for instance, I could be like, oh yeah, Hitler's a great person. What yeah, comes you across can't see the sarcasm audio. on your face and your fucking air quotes and everything else, right? Like, or or the head shake, or all the little nuance that comes in, and all you hear grabbing is grabbing at your sack at the same time, like, yeah, fuck you, <laughs> you know, what the... <laughs> right? And so, all you hear is a very skewed version of that, but at the same time, as the person that presents this final product it's my responsibility to address those issues to make sure that what comes out conveys the actual nature of the person and your fucking moonshine belly <laughs> so i just want to sing moonshine to it now <laughs> so there's a part of my brain that's always like yeah but how does this sound yeah and so given the guess we've had and it's not to say that they should have this responsibility. That's <laughs> they, on me. They need their own edit button. So you can but just <laughs> given the guess we've had, it's like they're a part of me that's going, oh, fuck, did they just say that? <laughs> Holy shit, how am I going to fucking edit that to convey the intonation or the facial expression that they had that they don't even <laughs> recognize I mean, went with the literal words that yeah. came out of their mouth. I mean, the, the best part, like, with Carl, for example, though, the best part with that one, because he, like, interrupted, like, an intellectual conversation. <laughs> he goes, wait, wait, I just want to say one thing. And we're like, all right, what? He goes, I think I can taste purple. <laughs> and we're like, wait, what the fuck, dude? Like, just out of nowhere. 
And we're like, hmm. all right, um, yeah, your meds just kicked in because that was when you just had uh, shoulder mm. surgery done. Right, yeah. We need to have him back on when, when he can actually be more uh, coherent. Yeah. Because yeah. cause we need to have him back on when he can actually fucking drink. That too. One of the things that I love about Carl is that he has such an extent of wealth of knowledge of history. Yeah. And a large part of his perspective of life and his approach to dealing with whatever comes from that experience. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Part of my brain's trying to figure out what exactly you said, and part of my brain's... Just like, no, no, don't worry about it. Slightly embarrassed that I said in experience. (laughs) (laughs) Well, now that you said it clearly for everybody to hear, where there's no two mics talking to each other, I said John Wayne. <laughs> that, that too. Okay. John Wayne, yes. But part of his insight into life comes from not just theory and talking out his ass and, and here's what I guess and here's what I think should be, but because he has had such a varied and diverse wealth of life experience that he can speak on many different subject matters coming from a standpoint of, I've been there, I know the history of this, I know where that came from and where that, Mm -hmm. you know, where we got those ideas from, things like that. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of the nature of his surgery and the meds that he were on and everything else, I think that a lot of that didn't come through. No, I'm oh, sure no, some definitely it, not. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure so, some of it may have, but I think that to the extent that you and I experience on a regular basis, I don't think it really no. came no, through as insightful as he regularly is. So yeah. I definitely want to have him back on. I want to have your brother back on. I want to have like a ton of people on. So ideals and plans and goals for the coming year. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> so so look forward to that. And we can we can have Mikey on if we record it when he's home. Dude, that would be epic. I totally want to do that. That would be awesome. I, I think he'd have a blast. Oh fuck yeah! Because he'd be like, wait a minute, I can say whatever I want now. Hell yeah. Dude, if you can coordinate that, I am all game. You organize it, you give me a date, I will absolutely be there. Because, cause, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Because. America! The, fuck yeah! Well, well, not only from the standpoint of being part of the family and having fun and having that same mindset of being upfront and honest. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's that, which is appealing. Separate to that, or in addition to that, I think that he is in a unique position that is it is still fresh and relevant in his working memory of the transition from, and I don't mean this insultingly, from boyhood to man. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is a key conversation that doesn't get had a lot. Yeah. And so I am... Absolutely, hundred percent, all about that. Well, if that, you can and, fucking and set that up, I will you know, be there. Five years or so, maybe even more. You've seen him grow up, right? 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 You know, you you've been over well for the past you know year from basically when he decided he wanted to do the air force till now. Right? You've like, been here at least once a month to see that right evolution of going from college student, you know, high school student to prepping for the military to leaving to now it'll be coming home after you know basic and and, and right. a little bit of tech school but not is not all the way done yet. right and questions like now that you've gone through it so now that you've gone through the gas chamber how did you think <laughs> well well not just gas chamber but like now that you've gone through this experience looking back on it prior to the experience what were you afraid of and now that you've gone through it what were you most impressed as far as your accomplishment yeah, that to me is an awesome question that very few people have ever answered, oh. and very few people like conversationally have ever addressed. Of yeah. here was what I thought was going to be a challenge, and here's what actually I'm impressed at myself for. Well, I 
you know, I asked him just, just out of curiosity, I said, okay, out of everything that I've taught you, everything that I've tried to, to instill in you as a quality and, and a way of viewing the world and a way of life, what, if you had to say one thing that helped you the most to get through basic, what would it be? Right. Without hesitation, he looks me in the dead in the face and he goes, your work ethic. He goes, right. countless times I've seen you at the kitchen table for hours doing something to get it done right. Right. And countless times I've seen stuff just sit there collecting dust because you knew you weren't going to have the time to do it correctly. So you weren't going to half-ass it. Right. It was going right, to be put right, off right. and wait until you could focus on it and do it properly. Right. He goes, that viewpoint of if I'm going to do this, I'm going to give it my all. Right. And it's right. going to be done right. Yeah. He's that viewpoint and standpoint really helped get me through all of this because I knew I have to do it. Right. I might as well do it right the first time and make sure it's done. Yeah. Then get called out and have to do it all over again. Right. <laughs> it's the, there's an old Russian saying is uh, you buy cheap, you buy twice. And it's yeah. that same sort of mentality yeah. of like, if you're going to do it, do it right the first time. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to be doing it three or four times. And if you don't like doing it, do it right the first time. It's like along the same yeah. thing, you know, uh, was it buy once, cry once, you know, mm. spend the money and get the good shit, not right. fucking half ass you know, bullshit. Yeah, exactly. And not to infer a downplay of your recounting of that. But to hear that from the horse's mouth, mm -hmm. that as well as whatever else. Yeah. Like, you tell me the date. Yeah. I'm fucking there. You, I'll fucking. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So we got to wrap this up. Okay. okay. So we've gone through highlights. Right. So we, we have an interesting highlight reel. <laughs> so to wrap this up, the last thing that was both. In a weird way, a highlight, but also kind of like a... Learning experience? <laughs> yes, but also like a look forward to the future. And I need your help for this. Uh-oh. All right. And this is part of why I want to save it to the end. Okay. <sighs> totally aside, every time I'm this drunk and I light a cigarette, I always there's a hint of fear of like, it's going to catch fire. Yep. <laughs> I'm not worried about the smoke catching fire. I'm worried about, like, all of a sudden the smoke catches fire and then I catch fire. Like, the goatee's going I'm up in flames. I'm worried about my breath, like, having so much alcohol content <laughs> that it, like, vaporizes and, like... Right. I mean, that's, fucking... that's a fair point. Uh, well, highly unlikely, okay. but fair. So, so, aside from all that. So, so, the podcast is called Drunken Sorcery. We have awesome drunken conversations. That said, one of the things that I want to do for the coming year is to at least try to engage in more conversations which bring in or tie in or approach the topics of the occult. Okay. Okay. I want to do that for two aspects, okay? One, because that's the field I work in, and that's the thing that interests me the most, and that I feel I have the most to contribute to. And secondly, and this is the most critical part, I want to try to incorporate those conversations because I am not good at those conversations. I suck at having those conversations. And those conversations are uncomfortable for me. And so similar to your self-reflection of, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, but I'm doing that too. I need to take that approach of self-reflection of how do I improve at having those conversations? And being able to approach talking about those things on a 
and I don't mean this in, insultingly, but on a common level to mm -hmm. someone that's not of that culture. Yeah. Okay. How do I approach having those conversations in a way that makes sense, that doesn't sound new agey, that doesn't sound foo-foo and crazy, when I am far more comfortable and familiar with the admonition of and keep silent and yeah. dismiss it. But having a and I need to get nature. into that uncomfortable space. I need to get out of my comfort zone but, to have those conversations. Two things. Having that kind of a conversation with someone that you are comfortable with and have a rapport with is going to be more comfortable and easier to ease into than a complete stranger. Okay? Right. That's, right. that's one. Right. Two. Quite frankly, I'm going to sum it up in one specific sentence that we quantified this at the very beginning. Uh -huh. I believe it was the first episode where we said, sorcery is a creation. Okay. Therefore, drunken sorcery is a drunken creation of our conversations. Right. And right, we right. qualified that by stating it's not going to be all about art and sorcery and occult. We will touch on it, which in some cases we have. Right, 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 right. So I'm not exactly apologetic. Right, But right. I can I can see your point of, well, this is what it's called. I get it. Right. And, and the... I'm not going to have you be doing magic in my house. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> but, but what, what... I don't need my I'm... workshop blowing up. <laughs> What I'm specifically referencing is that the idea of, yeah, but we've touched on it. Yeah, we've had way not more political conversations from, than we have about that, though. Not only from the editing side of it, but also from all sorts of various aspects where I've gone through and listened to the episodes. Mm -hmm. The number of times in which we've touched on it is to me yeah things like twice or something like two, right maybe a third time but not not it was like brief right. like right. oh yeah i do this is this and that was it right and to me seems a disparagingly small percentage okay. compared to the amount of time that it takes up in my working day like, I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, because no, I'm really, I, really drunk. I get it. I'm just trying to figure out, okay, do you want me to guide you more towards discussing occult stuff? I want your help in that matter. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. I, because... So I'm trying to figure out how to do it without it being a, hey, talk right. about something occult. <laughs> at the same time, like we talked about in a number Although of... I may just do exactly that at some point. No. <laughs> hey, excuse me, talk about something occult. Well, Come on, let's at, go. at the same time, like, <laughs> like, like we've talked about in a number of episodes, like I have no interest or intention in this being like a, you know, quote unquote magic one on one thing or like let me yeah. teach you fucking I, no, that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm saying is it is analogous to imagine we had a culture where archery was not only downplayed but forbidden okay hmm. that, is that doesn't change the fact that that takes up a large part of your life and your your mental yeah. capacity and what you know and your expertise and your awareness yeah. but growing up in that culture developing that culture being familiar with that culture understanding that you're not exactly going to develop the characteristics where you volunteer that information. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And I need to get out of that comfort zone. Okay. To be able to do that, which is on me, anything that you can provide. <laughs> anything. There you go. Now I got it. Anything that you can provide to contribute to getting me out of that comfort zone to speak on those matters okay, is awesome and I think would help at least on some level approach, yeah, but how does a sorcerer think about these things? You see what I'm saying? 
Yeah. And so that's one of the things that I want to definitely try to work on in the coming year is try to be more forthcoming. Uh, sounds so conceited, but be more forthcoming in my knowledge, you know? Yeah. I think that it seems to me mm -hmm. that from my own fault, I have not done service to the knowledge that I have Okay. of communicating and expressing that level of expertise that I have in that field. And so it comes across like I'm no different than, for lack of a better way of putting it, any average person that, okay, they know there's magic books out there, but so what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, there's that, but separate to that, when it comes to me, we're talking about a whole different fucking level here. It's more I a matter of talk about it, and I mean to, and yeah, should. <laughs> and it's it's more a matter of all, like you said, because you're so guided to the shh, don't talk about this aspect, even though you can talk about it. I just don't. Your brain and your subconscious is going. Nope, can't say it. Nope, yeah. can't say it. Yeah, because that's part of the. And teachers. half the time it doesn't even pop on the radar of no you talk just, about you, it from this perspective. Yeah, exactly. Know? So I mean, like I said, I'll do what I can to assist without being blatant about it. Sweet. But if I feel that it's something that doesn't fit in with where the conversation is oh, going, I'm yeah, not going to purposely steer it that way. No, and, and that's what I mean is like I'm not trying to say that that I'm trying to like politely suggest or infer some level of is my guitar floating can you explain that <laughs> well, well, that too but no i'm not trying to politely suggest or infer some level of scripting it's more a matter of i'll hand you a magic card look here Jeez. if this was real what would this be <laughs> right but it's one of those things where it's i have noticed in talking with certain people that because of my proclivity to not say the extent of what I know mm -hmm. to remain subversive in that matter that I have noticed when talking to certain people, it often comes across as a very like, Oh, well you're just the average person. Yeah. And there are, a great many times where that serves me and I'm not discounting. that. I enjoy looking at things from the quote unquote, normal average perspective. Yeah. That said, that conversely doesn't mean that I am unfamiliar with seven, seven, seven or fucking the Lamegaton or fucking a headless ritual or the Sekhmet or fucking the lesser Kia Solomon and the Guesha, or I mean, fuck, I'm I'm currently working on a sculpture of beer, fucking one of the presidents of hell from the Guesha. I'm familiar with these constructs of like what I'm currently working on in working with this sculpture of beer, the construct of Solomonic traditional magic and the dichotomies between the invocation and evocation of this Goetia demon okay. in relation to the Solomonic tradition as contrasted to the Protestant tradition and all of that contrasted to the Eastern traditions. And yeah, I'm good and familiar with how all of that works. Half of which, and I don't mean this insultingly, half of which you're probably like, what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas someone that is familiar with these <laughs> traditions or someone that is familiar with the actual magic of it yeah. is like, 
holy shit, do, do you actually know these things? And it's like, yeah, I'm not just a drunken idiot. Like, you know what I, I mean? Well, I am a dr- <laughs> well, here's the thing. I am a drunken idiot. I'm not just a drunken idiot. <laughs> ah, okay. There's the key. <laughs> and so it's like, well, yeah, but I need to get out of my comfort zone to be to approach talking about those things more fluidly than I am. Things like the disparity between theurgy and thaumaturgy and how thaumaturgy is almost a completely dead art in our modern society and where it exists in latent properties, whereas theurgy is actually re-emerging as a phenomena in social culture. And, for instance, what exactly is the difference between theurgy and thaumaturgy? I have no fucking idea. Right. And things like that, where it's like, these are things that I deal with on a daily basis, yet none of which I talk about because part of my brain is so segregated and locked up to be like, yeah, but you can't say anything. Okay. Keep silent. Like, don't talk about this shit. You know what I mean? And I need to get out of that comfort level to at least approach having a dialogue. Okay. I think that you could really help in that matter. All right. But all of that within the umbrella caveat of, yeah, it's not scripted. We're still going to get drunk off our ass and talk about whatever strikes our fancy. Yeah, exactly. I know. I But don't let me get away with, eh, it's complicated. All because right. I'll sit there and say that, trying to dismiss it, not because I'm thinking, but because that's habit while I'm drunk. Gotcha. Like, you see what I'm saying? Okay. Like, yeah. So that's one of the things that, over the course of, of season two, bum, 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 bum. <laughs> that, that I want to try to engage with more, at least from my standpoint of in whatever conversation we have, not only look at it from, you know, the pros and cons and the different like cultural, you know, positions that we have in whatever conversation, but also try to look at it from like, yeah, how would a sorcerer approach this? Okay. You know, and actually novel concept, use words in English to express that idea. Right. (laughs) Whereas most of the time I have, been far more comfortable going yeah i'll talk about how i feel personally and how i feel because of my cultural background but i'm not going to talk about that part like gotcha you know and i need to get out of that comfort zone to like be more expressive about that so that that's one of the things that i'm going to be working on for the coming season so okay yeah so that was about the only other (laughs) thing that that I like how you said the last thing's going to be quick and it just was like half an hour. Fuck you. <laughs> but no, that, that, that was the only thing. The other thing that, that stood out to me was how we started this podcast, Drunk and Sorcerer, and we hardly ever fucking talked about magic. And similarly, or in line with that, that's one of the things that I'm going to be working on. Okay. Moving I think part forward. Of it, I mean, part of the reason why I never brought anything up was because you had said that part of your learning magic is you're not supposed to talk about it. Right. So I right, said, okay, right. I'm just going to leave it alone. Right. And in as much as I appreciate that and I recognize the respect that you show in doing that, don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, well, so you heard it here. Crow said, don't be respectful. In regard to his, that. Of his... <laughs> Magic secrecy. Right. Like, so what you're saying is, by any means necessary, get you to talk. Well, <laughs> as long as it flows with the conversation. And, and remember who you're speaking with. <laughs> like, like, the thing is, is that... and I and torture the fuck out of you. <laughs> whatever. The, the, you say that now, right? <laughs> well, and the thing is, is that that Wait, not that to guitar's going where? <laughs> Look, that has nothing to do with magic, right? That's oh just... no, you'll think it's magic when I make it fit. <laughs> that, that's just a good Friday night, all right. The... I didn't say which end was going first. 
<laughs> as long as you can still play the frets on the right fucking stick, all right? <laughs> I can make that happen. It might um, sound a little weird, but I can make that happen. Why is my mouth making noise? <laughs> the guys, thing- guys, check this out. Look. Uh... <laughs> the thing is, one of my long-term goals, one of the things that I would absolutely feel fulfilled in in life is to sit down whether it's publicly or not i'd be okay if it was entirely privately completely non-recorded you know no one knew about it Mm -hmm. but to sit down with someone the caliber of neil degrasse tyson who is staunchly entrenched and staunchly insightful and educated in matters science yeah and to present a valid viewpoint of what magic really is. Okay. To be able to express there's this whole field of study that is being overlooked. And to do so not in a confrontational of, ha, see, I'm right. Or, ha, see, magic is better than science. No. But to present it in such a way where it's, this isn't as batshit crazy as it sounds. Mm-hmm. And I recognize that it sounds batshit crazy. But I can show you it works. But I can show you it works. Gotcha. But I can present the rationale behind it. Okay. That doesn't mean we have all the answers. But someone from a scientific background has a lot better insight and capability about how to approach getting those answers than someone from an operational background. Gotcha. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to be able to, like I said, not have an argument or a public debate, but have an actual conversation, even if it's private, about you're a scientist, I'm a magician, what would you suggest I go from here? Okay. And having this presented now how does that influence your research? Like, you know what I mean? And having that actual interaction. And that would be something that I would find incredibly fulfilling as far as a quote unquote life's work or like, you know, as as a goal for life. That said, that's never going to happen if I can't even have basic conversation about it because I get so tongue tied because of unfamiliarity with even talking about it. Okay. Like, does that make sense? No, I understand. At the same time, I'm not trying to script it. It's just I need to get more comfortable talking yeah. about it, and fucking I'm not, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, fuck you, because <laughs> dicks and fucking <laughs> guitar strings. <laughs> no, don't think about it. <laughs> Too late. Argued. <laughs> so, yeah, that. What, what is that? The Hell's Gate? It's got like the the, the fucking like the, the rings that go all the way up the dick and then the one part goes in the fucking No idea what the fuck you're talking about. Shit. Basically like, like a cage. Okay. But it doesn't go around it. It actually goes like like cylindrically on it so it follows the shaft itself. Okay. The last part is basically if the person has a Prince Albert, right? It goes through the top and out where the piercing is and locks. No, but made out of guitar string. So no. as they as the, like 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 wow. the low like the low no, E chord. Stop. <laughs> so no. as they fidget and move around, it's like that saw blade rubbing against it. Ah. <laughs> no. And that's why I'm the asshole. <laughs> yeah, fuck the guy that. See, fucking... like I said, you said make you talk. I said, remember who you're talking to. <laughs> make me talk does not mean make me fucking cringe and put my knees together because of fucking uncomfortable fucking you said, visceral I should say, neuro neurons. I said, by any means necessary, get you to talk. You said, yeah. I said, okay. Okay. So, that being said... <laughs> Maybe, I don't know because I'm too drunk, but maybe it would be better to express it as <laughs> don't constrain yourself to not being able to approach that topic just because of my uncomfortability with it. Okay. 
which is separate to <laughs> guitar strings and Prince Alberts. All right, Jesus fuck. Oh. This is like an awesome band name. <laughs> guitar strings and Prince Alberts. <laughs> Uh, that just sounds like a whiny emo band. Like <laughs> everything it hurts. Tonight for one night only, live guitar strings and Prince Alberts. <laughs> wow, that is worth the price of admission, right See, there. There you go. Oh, like shit. I said. All right. So, so to wrap this up, the last thing. What are your hopes, goals, dreams, planning on whether it happens or not? Over the next 12 fucking months, the next season, to actually no get to the point during the podcast that I can't drive you home afterwards. <laughs> How's that? That's your goal? Why not? Has yeah. it happened yet? No, but All I, would, right. I would hope you'd have a loftier goal than that. Come on. That's pretty lofty. That's just a matter of you drinking more. Which is still pretty lofty. You still got some in that. Is it? Oh, Jesus Christ. That's half a bottle of fucking moonshine, dude. All right. All right. So I have another goal is to get you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Good to know. <laughs> but no, anyway, in all seriousness, I would like to have a few more guests on the podcast. Okay. One of which I want to be someone who's heard of the podcast before, like all the episodes. Okay. And I want their, what are the key points through the first season? Okay. I actually may have someone that can do that. That's fine. I've actually tentatively been in the works for that, so that may line up well. Okay. Yeah. But like okay, from the complete listener's perspective. Right, right, right. What right. are the and not just key points, what are their pros and cons of the podcast? Okay. So Which may way. or may not be broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like, so that way you can cater what you say to appeal to a wider audience. No, it's more a matter of so that if there's something we need to work on to make this better okay. audio. Right. Or you need a new fucking chair. It makes too much noise. <laughs> right, or right, right. move your mic a little bit further away because every time you go to make whatever fucking sound, it just muffles everything. <laughs> or, or, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever the case may be. Okay. You know, what they would say is, a, you know, pros and cons. Or maybe, you know, all right. Try not to go off the rails on such and such topic as much as you do. But at the same time, don't edit what you say. Just maybe wrap it up after 10 minutes instead of an hour and a half. <laughs> okay. Yeah, something of that nature, maybe. Because, right. um, I mean, I know when we get on certain subjects, I just go and go and go and go and go oh, because I don't really dislike that. Though. Okay. All right. Like, for, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> from my opinion, I think that there is a big social disparity between what people have an expectation of and the challenges of real conversation. And the challenges of real conversation involves listening to someone go and go and go and go to understand fully, do they mean this? Do they mean this? Do they mean this? I need to shut up and fucking listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? In having three conversations, one of which is a guy that I work with, one of which is a friend whom you've met. Okay. And another one is a friend of mine from high school. In three conversations, out of like, say, 50, but right. those three people approached me completely like anti-gun. All right. After a few different conversations with each one, explaining my point, listening to their point, pointing out where some flaws may have been in their view, giving them a place to look it up, as well as them knowing me on a personal level. Right. All three of them have agreed to go to the shooting range with me and learn more. Right, right. right. Now, that is not to change their view. Right. That is so that they can actually have first-hand knowledge 
before making a determination because they realize how much knowledge they lack on the subject to make a determination. Right. Now, to me, being able to hold my composure, for lack of a better phrasing, good one. <laughs> At least it wasn't glass. The other one went underneath your chair yeah. somewhere. And remain calm enough to fully explain what I was getting at. Right. And politely explain where their viewpoint was flawed and why. I felt pretty damn good about myself. Right. The fact that they approached me afterwards and said, hey, look, the next time you decide to go to, you know, whatever range, whatever, let me know. Right. I, I'd like to go and, and even if I don't do, you know, do anything myself, I'd like to, to watch you and see what it's like. Right, right, right. And, you know, the one guy was like, oh, I went and watched those videos that you told me about, yada, 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 and I think I might want to get one. Like, you know, for myself, I'm I'm not going to bring it out of the house, but at least I'll have it at the house. God forbid something happens. Right, right, right. You know, and it was like, all right, no problem. Then before you even think about it, you can come with me and I will teach you how to use it. Right. Well, then you'll know what you're getting yourself into. And I think that not trying to suck your nuts too much, but I think to... But a little bit? Just a little bit. All right. As long as it's really slobbery, though. Uh, I'm kind of drunk. It's got like cotton mouth thing going on. Oh, like it's gonna, yeah. little, it's gonna be kind of pasty. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all right. Right. Well, I <laughs> to your credit that, and this is something that isn't necessarily relevant to the listeners, but you know, having a real conversation. To your credit, one of the things that you know, from the standpoint of like year in review of like looking back at the year, but also looking forward. And looking at, like, those large overarching motifs and thematic aspects, taking a step back and looking at the large picture. Mm -hmm. Okay. As many conversations as we've had, and as many different points that we've disagreed on, and that we've argued pros and cons on, that... One of the things that I most appreciate about having a conversation with you is that the focus of what you express, to me at least, never comes across as an attempt to proselytize or sell someone on your position. Okay. So, for instance, in relation to what you just brought up, knowing you, none of what you have conveyed communicates that your goal is to convince them to get a gun. It is to entirely help them better understand the full scope of the issue that they are concerned about. Yeah. And if at the end of the day, at the end of all of the various pursuits and admonitions and, and inference and, <laughs> and advice, ammunitions. <laughs> that, that if at the end of the day they were like, okay, I still think that guns should be banned. I think that one of the things that I appreciate most about you is that you would take the standpoint or have the attitude of, while I disagree with your opinion, I appreciate the fact that you at least have a much deeper and better understanding. Yeah. Than before making that decision. Before making that decision. And that your pursuit of helping others gain that knowledge is not to proselytize and it's not to like convince them. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, even if you disagree afterwards, come to the range. See yeah. what it's really like. Yeah. You know what I mean? Try it for yourself. You 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 never know. You may pull the trigger once and be like, "This is fucking awesome," or you right. may pull the trigger and be like, "What the hell happened? I don't want to do that again at all." Right. And if they have that opinion, to me at least, it seems like you have the mindset of, "I'm okay with that if they have that opinion, as long yeah. as it's an 
informed opinion rather than an opinion based on artificial prejudice and superficial bias, which is a totally different dialogue and conversation from, I don't like guns because they're bad. It's like, I don't understand what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, <laughs> it, that's what I mean is it's not that you are pursuing getting everyone to your side. It is that you're pursuing the legitimacy of the conversation, you know? Yeah. But like I said, it was just one of those things of, you know, actually having a conversation went from, you know, when I sat there and asked what their basis was, what's their reason. Right. And they really didn't have one other than what the media tells them. Right. It turned into, you know, okay, well, I mean, you're wrong. And I explained my viewpoint and why. And like two days later, I get a, one was through a message over Facebook. One was, you know, at work. Like, oh, hey, by the way, concerning our conversation the other day, maybe you're right. Maybe I do need a little bit more knowledge before I make a decision. So next time you're going out to the range, if you can bring me with you. Let me know. Yeah. I'll try it out and see what it's actually like for myself before I make a decision. Right. You know, one guy was like, look, I'm not against them. Personally, I don't have any. I don't want to. But I'd love to learn the knowledge. Right. I'd right, love right. to learn more about it. So this way, if I have a discussion, I have firsthand knowledge. Right. And he even said, he goes, and who knows? I may change my mind. Right. But without having firsthand knowledge, I won't know. Right, right, and I was right, like, at right. that point, I was like, "Ding!" Light bulb went off. Right. All right, cool. Right, yeah. It, so. It's almost the analogy of like, I don't care if you don't like chocolate, as long as you don't like it because you've tasted it, not because someone else told you that you shouldn't like it. Yeah, it's a matter. It's not going to gonna change yeah. me liking it. But to me, it was <laughs> it was that simple thing of, hey, having an actual conversation with somebody works. Maybe more people should fucking try it. Right. Not just yeah. bash each other because they don't agree. Right, right, right. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. That, that was my point of bringing this up in the first place. So, yeah. But anyway, we probably should wrap so, this up. Yeah. So, All right. for like the fifth time. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We've had a great year in review. Touched on a few points. Had a few new conversations. Again, like we said before, if there's anything you want to let us know about, send us a message, drop us comments, whatever the case may be, and I like, hope you all we'll have a good read night. Them. Huh? Because we'll read them. Ah. Hey, if somebody sends me a message, I'll read it. Well, may or may not respond, but I mean, I'll read it. If someone sends me a message, I probably won't even realize I did until fucking like, <laughs> you like know, a month and a half later. Right, until I'm like, up Why is my fucking of... new message going off all the time? What the fuck? Right? What does this button do? <laughs> <laughs> so so on that note good night everybody good night everybody that's such a shitty ending <laughs> so what are you doing I mean, what i don't fucking know eat my nuts what, what the fuck am i gonna say <laughs> all right everybody eat my nuts <laughs> what, what are you <laughs> Yeah, cause that's so much better. Well, season two. Eat my nuts. Eat my nuts. <laughs>